Hey guys, welcome to The Hangar. My name is Sam. And I'm Kylan. And today we're going to be building the HRC-7. The 7 is a rewarding project that anyone can complete in an afternoon. With its beautiful scale appearances in the sky and the diverse range of flight envelopes, the 7 is a plane for anyone and everyone. Whether it's you just getting into the hobby or an experienced pilot, this is a scratch build that will turn heads at the flight line. This is a plane that you can be proud that you saved you built. The HRC-7 was designed by Kylan here. The 7 is our second airframe, but it's called the 7. Kylan, why don't you tell them why? I had a flight in a real RV-7. And uh, yeah, it was a ton of fun. It was the first time I ever was able to really uh, see what aerobatics was like in the sky, you know, with me being in the airplane. Um, I don't know, I guess it kind of inspired me. I wanted a little RC model of it, and it was made for a great one. Yeah, for sure. You know, we've got the Vulture already. We kind of wanted something that was going to be not the easiest to fly, but not the hardest to fly. Something that we can really have fun with, you know, turn heads at the field. Um, but didn't want anything to be too crazy to build, too difficult. It's a light sport trainer, super easy to build, super cheap. Um, but yeah, just tons of fun. Something you can build in a few afternoons with your, you know, whether it's with your dad, with your friends, by yourself. Yeah, for whatever sure. you feel like. Sure. The thing about the HRC7 is it really goes with our mantra here at the hangar of easy to build, easy to fly. And not only is it easy to build, but easy to fly, it looks phenomenal. This plane, as you see, we got one back here on the wall, is, is an amazing plane has the, the scale looks, especially when it's in the sky. It, mm. it just flies super scale. The slow down, speed up, I mean, Definitely. It's, it's an amazing airframe. Yeah, it'll do pretty much whatever you want it to do. Yeah. So let's, uh, let's get our supplies in order. Let's open up this quick kit and let's show you what's in it. Let's get to the build. Today's episode is sponsored by Adrenaline RC, the local hobby shop in Northern Utah. And without their support, this episode wouldn't be possible. If you haven't had a chance already, head on over to thehangerrc.com and pick yourself up a quick kit. It'll make the build process a lot easier and save you a lot of time. Save you a lot of time. Yep. Okay, so let's open it up and see what's inside. First thing you'll see is the info sheet. This is just gonna give you all the specs as far as the prop, the motor, brushless CSC, battery, all that kind of stuff, the stuff I recommend using. Um, gives you a picture. It also gives you a QR code that'll take you to the build video. It's a fantastic thing to have on there. Um, next thing you'll see, of course we had to throw in a few stickers because you know, everyone loves stickers. Okay, next up, you've got the first sheet of skins for the seven. This one in particular, obviously the uh, yellow and purple scheme. That now opens it up to the kit itself. Also hidden in these little cavities in here, we've got the 3D printed parts. You got an elevator brace, and then you'll notice we've got your control horns and you also have your motor mount. First sheet, got the nice hanger logo on there. You got, you know, nice full set of parts. <laughs> and underneath that, you got your rudder, and you got your wing for your skin. And then, there's your second sheet of parts, rudder, another wing, uh, part of your spar, wing tip. You even throw in a barbecue skewer in there. Next is another sheet of skin. Just the other side of the rudder, other side of the wing. Another sheet of parts. And this is gonna be the underside of the wing. It's gonna be your bottom of your uh, fuselage. Bottom of your fuselage, more of your wing tip, more wing tips, and then the other side of the wing. Let's see, I think there's another one here. All right. As we go through the build video, we'll explain each part. We'll let you know when and where it'll be used. Here's your final set of skins. 
All right, underneath that, we'll see two long wires and two short wires. These will be your push rods for the aircraft. And finally, the last sheet of parts. All right, let's get our parts back together and I'll have Sam teach you how to apply the skin to the airplane. Now that Kylan stepped you through the parts and what's included, once again, as a quick recap, there are five pieces of foam and six sheets of skins. If you haven't seen our tutorial on how to skin our airframes, we'll put a link in the description below. The first thing you're going to need for applying the skin to the airframe is, and probably your most important piece of equipment, is going to be an X-Acto knife with sharp blades. When I was in school, our professors made us change our blades every three or four cuts. I don't know if you need to be that extreme, but you should change your blades often. If you're not getting a clean cut through the foam or through the skin itself, then you need to change your blades. You can use scissors, but once again, scissors aren't going to give you a, a clean cut. You can actually use a straight edge with an X-Acto knife and get a, a pretty clean cut, uh, more so than if you were to just use scissors. Speaking of straight edges, I always use a cork back ruler. It allows the ruler to sit off the, the piece and allows you to get a really clean cut. Spray glue. I have multiple brands of spray glue. As you can see, you could spend the extra money on the Super 77, the 3M product. It's a great product, but really any spray glue will work. And if your skin peels up or delaminates from your airframe, just throw a dab of hot glue underneath it and you won't have a problem with it again. Speaking of hot glue, I have a hot glue gun. I'm using the AdTech Pro 80. I had a Pro 100, and I'll be honest, I didn't like it as much as the Pro 80s. I called AdTech, and they uh, said that the Pro 80s actually replaced the 100. So get yourself a good glue gun that can supply a good amount of hot glue. You're also going to need some glue sticks. Also, you're going to need some tape. I like the Duck brand, Easy Start. It's super clear. It's super strong. It makes your planes look really good. This will be used on the hinges for the control surfaces. Any clear packing tape will do, but this is the brand I like to use because it really makes your plane look sharp. And the last thing you're gonna need is a spray bottle full of water, especially if you're building from our plans. When you're building from the quick kits, the laser cut foam really makes it easy to get the paper delaminated from the foam itself, but have a spray bottle just in case. Other than that, I think that's all the supplies we need. Let's get to our build. Okay, let's separate these out. Stickers, gotta love the stickers. Move that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to, and I, I really like to do the parts individually, one at a time, as opposed to like cut all the skins out and then apply them. You can do it however you want. I'm going to step you through doing it individually. Once again, if you haven't seen our tutorial on how to do this, I'll put a link in the description below. Okay, let's just start with this first sheet. Should be your top sheet and your quick kit if you're building from the quick kit and this first sheet of foam. So I'm just going to separate these out, these two pieces out from the rest of the kit. Put the rest of this aside for the time being. We're going to start by separating the individual pieces from the sheet that the skin is on. Um, the first sheet has three pieces. This is your main fuselage, your empennage, and your cowling. So you can separate these with scissors if you would like. I prefer to do it with my straight edge and my X-Acto knife. So, this part, I don't have to use a straight edge if I have a steady hand. I can just separate these pieces out. I'm just going to cut along here. Whoops. That piece is separated. Now onto this piece, and I might as well cut this piece. Because I'm cutting along the side, this edge anyway. There, that piece is separated, the empennage is separated and the empennage is separated from the fuselage. Let's set these two pieces aside and let's cut out this skin. This is the empennage, this is the back of the airframe. Uh, the airframe. Um, I'm gonna take my corkback ruler and I'm going to go, I'm gonna cut around this right on the line. Once again, I have a sharp X-Acto blade. Now, 
couple things with the with cutting with exacto dot blades. Here's kind of a pro tip. First thing you want to do is you always want to put your cork back ruler over your artwork. This way, if you accidentally cut outside the line, you're not cutting into your actual skin. The other thing you want to do is a lot of people will cut their exacto knives like this, or they'll hold them too narrow of an angle, too steep or too shallow of an angle. I like to hold it like a pencil and cut using the edge of the blade. Don't cut using the tip. It'll tend to tear the foam and the paper as well. I'll finish up this cut. Okay. Didn't cut all the way through. I didn't use enough pressure. I'm just going to run it down it again. And I have a nice clean edge. Repeat on every edge of the empennage. Working my way around. Now, if you can see this, I missed a little edge there, just barely. I can just go back and trim that up. If you miss an edge, it's okay. Just go back and give it a little trim. It'll still fit the foam. And I just trimmed that up. So now I'm going to make these cuts for the control surfaces, the horizontal and vertical stabilizers. Once again, protecting my artwork. Always protecting your artwork. Also, you'll want to make sure that you be careful not to scratch your skin. It does scratch easily. You want to make sure you won't want to, you won't have any sharp fingernails because that will scratch your skin. One last cut here. After you get your airplane done, you can use a coat of polyacrylic, the spray polyacrylic, to waterproof and seal the print on the skin. Once again, you can use scissors to do this, but just be aware you're not going to get as clean as cut as if you use an X-Acto knife and a straight edge. Take your time on this step. The cleaner your cuts are and the more accurate your cuts are, the better your plane will look. All right. Now that I got this piece fully cut out, let's go back to our laser cut foam. Let's set this aside. Go back to our laser cut foam. You'll notice these little tabs. These little tabs are for manufacturing purposes only. You can definitely punch them out of the foam, but I would recommend cutting through them with an X-Acto knife or a razor blade. That will allow the foam to come out clean and your plane will turn out much cleaner. So let's take this piece and cut, our, our, cut all the tabs. They're usually in the corners. Just cut them out, make sure you go all the way through the foam. There's one, there's one, and then this piece should come out cleanly if you haven't missed one. And this piece should come cleanly out of the foam. Just like that. So now that we have this piece done, we can delaminate the back side of it. You don't want to delaminate the front side or the top side of it, which is where these score cuts are. The score cuts do not go all the way through the paper. Your skin is going to be mounted on the outside, which is this side of it. So we're going to start by peeling up. Now, if this doesn't peel up cleanly, you want to make sure that you use some water on it. With these laser, laser cut kits, it tends to peel up pretty nicely. Pull the skin back, or pull the paper back. We're just delaminating all the way. Grab this last little corner. And just like that, we've got a delaminated piece of foam board. Now, you'll notice it has a slight curl to it now. That's okay. When we start building the plane, it'll flatten out. If you are building from our plans, most likely you'll want to take off the paper on two sides. 
During the build process, we'll be taking off this piece of paper anyway, so we can mold this piece of foam. But for now, let's leave it on. Next thing we wanna do is get your favorite spray glue. Always shake well. This happens to be Gorilla Glue, uh, heavy duty spray adhesive. You're gonna set this piece aside. You're gonna grab the skin and you're gonna spray the skin. When you spray, you wanna do nice even coats and you wanna stop at the end of each pass. Much like an auto body car painter person does. This way it avoids buildup on the edges. You wanna be careful not to get it sprayed on too thick because it will bleed through the paper. Now, you wanna make sure you do this in a well-ventilated area. I grabbed my speedball roller that I picked up my local arts and crafts store. This just helps me apply the skin. I'm going to line up the skin Starting with one edge first. Make sure it's lined up. Your fingers are going to get a little bit sticky. So you make sure you wash your hands good. Make sure things are lined up perfectly. I'm going to press it down. Using my speedball roller, I'm going to roll over the whole skin. Just to make sure, just to ensure that it's nicely pressed down. You end up with a little hangover like this. That's okay, you can just go, you can leave it and fill it with glue or just trim it up before you put the airframe together. And there is our empennage, all laminated, ready to be built. Let's move on to the next piece. You got spray glue on your hands? You're gonna make, wanna make sure you wash it off because that will transfer to your skin and just make it end up looking bad. So make sure you wash your hands after you spray. I typically don't like to. Uh, I typically don't like to uh, spray in my. I typically don't like to spray in my work area because it does put a fine mist of glue over everything. I'll usually step outside um, or somewhere where it's not going to matter if the spray glue gets on everything. Once you've clean, cleaned up your work area, make sure everything's really, really dry because once again, you don't want the wet work surface to ruin your skin. Just take a few minutes to clean up if you spray in your work area. From now on, I'm not going to spray now that I've showed you. I'm not going to spray in my work area. I'll be stepping away from the camera to spray. So just keep that in mind. I'm not spraying every piece here. I just do that first spray just to show you so you can see a live spray on camera. Give my work area just a minute to dry. Make sure your hands are super clean. Just to make sure that you've got, you don't have any dirt. Otherwise it will transfer to your skin. If you do happen to get a little bit of spray glue on the skin, as long as it's not on a printed area, you can take an X-Acto knife, make sure it's sharp and scrape very lightly. Take that top layer of paper off. Once again, as long as it's in a white, area where there's no ink, you can actually clean up your skin just by scraping that top layer of paper off. Just very lightly. You don't want to ruin your skin. As you can see, as I've scraped that off, makes the skin look a lot nicer if you do happen to get spray glue on your skin. Don't do it where there's printed, where there's ink. You have to only do it in the areas of light. Let's move on to our next piece now that our work area is dry. The next piece is going to be the cowling. And this is where it's going to require you to develop your skill at freehanding. Because this, there's not a straight edge on this piece of this cowling. So I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to follow the line. Always look ahead of where you're cutting. Believe it or not, if you look ahead where you're cutting, you'll stay on the line as opposed to watching where your blade is. I always look 
five to 10 millimeters ahead of where I'm cutting. That allows you to get a clean cut and follow the line. Once again, look five to 10 millimeters ahead. Take your time. If you need to practice, draw a couple lines or have your a buddy or a family member draw or your kids draw a couple lines on a sheet of paper with a pencil and practice there first before tackling your skin. I may look make this look like it's easy, but I've been doing this for 20, almost 20 years. Okay, now that piece, the cowling is cut out. We're gonna go back to our foam. Find the cowling, happens to be right here. Trim out the manufacturing tabs, punch it out, set the rest of this foam aside. Now, don't throw this foam away because it contains additional pieces that you're not going to be skinning. So make sure you keep the foam around until you know you have all your pieces. Okay, once again, we're gonna be skinning the backside not not the inside this is the outside of the airframe grab the edge peel it back all the way off take our skin take our spray adhesive and spray even coats stopping at each stopping each time you go off the paper keep in mind The glue is activated by dry time. Line up your piece. These smaller pieces are real easy. I will show you a technique that will allow you to do bigger pieces. Take your speed bar roller again and roll it out. Be careful not to crush the foam on the edges as you roll off of it. Let's set this piece aside. This is the fuselage, and we're gonna trim out the fuselage. Now we're gonna to have to freehand these two pieces right here. Now that we have this piece cut out, we're gonna go back to our foam and punch out the main part of the fuselage. Once again, cutting the tabs making sure all those tabs are cut completely through, you'll get a cleaner result. Once those tabs are cut through, come right out of the foam. This is the inside with the score lines. This is the outside. This is the piece that we're, the, this is the side that we're skinning. Grab a corner, very carefully roll back the paper, that's okay if it tears, and now we spray this piece. If you need to have a friend help you mount this piece, go ahead and do that. I always like to dry fit these pieces before I spray them to make sure not only is it the right piece, because some of the pieces look similar but also to make sure I've made my cuts correctly. Put light coats of spray glue, give it a sec to dry, and then starting with the long edge, go ahead and line your foam up, or line your skin up to your foam, making sure everything lines up nice 
and perfect. And press it down. Take, once again, take your speed ball and roll it out. There we go. Looks good. Let's move on to the control surfaces. We're going to start with the vertical stabilizer. Make sure you locate both halves. They're on two separate sheets. We're just going to quickly cut these out with our knife just to separate it from the top half of the wing. Set this one aside. Separate this side of the vertical stabilizer. Set this piece aside. Use our straight edge to cut the straight lines out. Make sure you don't cut these tabs off. And what I typically do, because these tabs tab into the horizontal stabilizer, I usually just like to freehand the downs. I usually like to freehand the sides. Because they're not going to be seen, and it's a little bit quicker. Here comes the tricky part. Always protecting my artwork with my ruler. Rehand those curves. Get some practice if you need to before you do this step. Have your buddy or a child, make, she, make you some curvy lines that you can practice with. Take your time and be careful and your skin should come out fantastic. <clears throat> Okay, let's go ahead and make this top curve. This top radius. There we go. This is where your control horn is going to go. We need to cut this out. I should be using my ruler. Do as I do as I say, not as I do. Until you feel comfortable doing that, make sure you use your ruler on all the straight edges, even the little ones, even this little teeny, that little teeny edge right there. Make sure you use your straight edge. Okay, that one's done. Let's move on to the next one. Be very careful on that part not to cut through. Don't make the mistake and go all the way through your skin. Cut right along this purple line. Here, you'll want to make sure that you don't cut through your tabs. Although, it wouldn't be the end of the world. This piece in the empennage are probably the two most difficult pieces to cut out on this skin, on this particular bird. All right. Go ahead and freehand these radiuses. Make sure things are cut all the way through. One more radius to go. All right. 
And there we have our skins. Let's find our piece, which is the vertical stabilizer. It's on the next sheet of foam. Set this barbecue skewer aside. Cutting our tabs. Missed one. There we go. I noticed a lot of you, as you've been building our airframes, having a little bit of a hard time with these control surfaces where there's a hinge involved. Okay. The first thing you want to do is you don't want to delaminate the side without the hinge. In this instance, the rudder will just fall right off. So start with the side that has the score line in it. Okay, peel off the first piece of paper. What this does is this allows the paper on the opposite side to keep everything together so that you don't have this piece falling off and having to scab it back in. If you do it, if it does come off and you do do the wrong side, yeah, you do the wrong side, it's okay. You can still fit it back together, but this just makes it easy so you can do that without having to worry about your, your horizontal stabilizer, or your vertical stabilizer, or any control surface for that matter, ailerons, rudder, elevator falling off. So make sure that you keep the paper on one side during this process. Let's go spray this side of the skin. Once we have the skin sprayed, we're going to make sure we line it up. Always dry fit. Line it up. Press it down. Speedball it. Now that we have this side skinned, it's going to hold this joint together and we can go to the back side and actually delaminate the solid side without worrying about the piece coming off. In this case, the rudder separating and having to worry about putting it back together. Dry fit it. It's pretty good. Let's go spray it. Now that we got this sprayed, Line it up. Press it down. Speed roll it. Speed ball it. Okay. Now we can come back through and you'll notice, I don't know if you can see it on your skin, there's a dotted line. You'll want to cut through that dotted line on one side of the skin. Make sure it's on the right side. There's a faint dotted line. It's where your foam, your laser cut foam has been scored. If you can't see it on your quick kit on the skin, just take your ruler, line it up there. You might want to take your ruler anyway, because it will help you cut through this straight. Line it up. And without going through both pieces of paper, the skin on the other side, you just want to run your razor blade through the skin. And that will separate your hinge. Now you'll notice this piece came up. I'm just going to take a little drop of top glue, like so, and then just stick this piece back down and it will never delaminate again. Being careful not to get the hot glue in the hinge. Now, before we move on to the next piece, 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to take our duck brand clear tape and I'm going to cover the solid side of the hinge. This will allow me to reinforce my paper and reinforce that hinge so that hinge will never break on you. Take a scrap piece of foam if you have one and just press that tape down. Cut around your edges. Same here. Now that I've got that on, I can go ahead and cut out the tape by flipping this over and just using the foam as a guide, trace the piece and that will cut through the tape. And give you a really strong hinge. I always like to maintain a uh, clean work area. Those of you who have been building with foam and foam board for a long time know that it can get really messy really quick. So I always take the time in between each piece just to pick up my scraps and make sure that I have a clean start for my next piece. This way it keeps you organized and keeps you, keeps the, the workspace clean and neat. Now that we've got the vertical stabilizer done, let's move on to the horizontal stabilizer. I'm going to locate the pieces of laser cut foam. Here they are. The sheets of skin look like this. There's one, and there's two. This is what the piece of laser cut foam board looks like. This is our horizontal stabilizer. Going to separate these out. There we go. In this particular case, some of these pieces are pure white. That means there's no design on them. That's okay. That's part of the design. This is just for reinforcement so that the paper on your plane is consistent all around. This piece is going to come right out. Okay, just like that. I didn't even have to cut the tabs off that piece. Now we've got our two skins and our horizontal stabilizer with our rudder. Let's cut the skins out. In this case, we've got two pieces here. These pieces we'll want to take out there where the vertical stabilizer tabs in to the horizontal stabilizer. Make sure you can see your line so you know when to stop and start or start and stop. Once again, I'd recommend using a ruler. I'm just going to freehand these. Okay, on to the next piece. Repeat the same process on this piece. Now I've noticed that my blade is getting a little bit dull. At this point, to maintain the quality of my cuts, I think I'm going to change my blade. I buy these blades in bulk. It appears that I'm almost out. Kylan, remind me to reorder those. 
Make sure you dispose of your used blades in a safe way. Some sort of plastic container. Now that I've got a sharp blade, this will be nice. Once again, if you feel like you can do these by hand, go ahead. Otherwise, make sure you use the ruler. This piece right here that I'm cutting out is for the rudder brace, or is for the elevator brace. Those pieces are cut out. You can punch them out, and we're ready to spray. Once again, we want to start on the side of the score line. That way, it allows this solid piece to hold to hold this elevator in place while we skin both sides. Peel off the foam. Line it up. Speedball it out. Repeat the same process on the other side. I'll start by peeling up a corner, pulling it back. Now you'll notice this piece peeled not cleanly. Part of it's because I went too fast, but if you have that happen a lot on your foam, just get a spray bottle and some water and spray it down and it'll come right off. Rub it in, it'll come right off. Okay, test fit our piece. Line your piece up. Press it down, speed ball it out. Now that we've got both sides laminated, it's time to cut our hinge. There's a faint line here, all the way across where that hinge line is. Take your ruler, line it up on the line. Make sure you go just through the one piece, but go all the way down. Now that we've cut that hinge line, I'm going to grab my duct brand tape, find the edge here, there it is, line it up, press it down, cut it off. Take your scrap piece of foam and press it down. Make sure the whole thing's pressed down. Now that we've got that done, flip it over using your piece as a guide. Go ahead and trim up the tape. And now, a horizontal stabilizer is done. On to the next piece. Let's move on to the bottom of the empennage. I'm going to separate it out from the foam. Cut those manufacturing tabs. Pop it out. Put that piece aside. Separate it from the other piece on your skin. And now, this one's an easy one. Four straight cuts. Man, those nice sharp blades really do help. Once again, I know this is white on white, but it really helps reinforce. 
Our skins, not only do they look rad, but they actually add reinforcement. They make the foam a lot sturdier, a lot more stiff. On the back side, it doesn't have the score lines. I'm gonna peel up the foam. Just like that, test fit, always dry fit. Looks good, spray, come back here, whoops. Line it up. Press it down. Speedball it. Should be good to go. Done deal. We're going on to the next piece. The next piece we're going to skin is the canopy. It's this funny shaped piece right here. Let's go ahead and separate it out. Okay, should be able to pop this out now. Very carefully. Okay. After we've got this popped out, let's locate the skin sheet that has the canopy on it. Let's cut this skin sheet out using my ruler for all the straight edges, just like we've done before. Come on the back and all the curves along the front and in the print you can actually see where the curves stop and where the straight starts don't feel like you have to freehand this whole front piece now using a straight edge on these two back slivers These ones and these ones, these two and these two, we're going to have to freehand because they are not perfectly straight. By this point, you should be fairly good at freehanding. If not, once again, have someone draw some lines for you and practice. Practice is what makes perfect, just like when you're out flying, out at the field, practice makes perfect. It's why we do this hobby. It's a challenge. All right, last piece. It's really hard to see with these studio lights. All right. Now, onto the skin. Now you'll notice with this piece, it really doesn't matter which side you skin. So just pick one, delaminate. This one might be a little bit trickier to delaminate because it's such a funky shaped piece. Oh, thought I was going to have to use some water there. Dry fit. Looks pretty good. Let's go spray it. All right. I like to start at the back here. Make sure everything lines up really good. Press it down, speedball it. Canopy done. Let's move on to the wingtips. Wingtips look like this. There should be four of them. A right side top and bottom, and a left side top and bottom. 
one, two, three, four. I'm just going to separate these really quickly. And now I'm going to go ahead and locate those wing tips on the foam. There's one. Here's two. Number three and four happen to be on the same sheet of foam. Right next to the bottom plate of the fuselage. Just gonna separate these tabs. And those two pieces should fall right out. So we have four pieces of foam and four sheets of skin. Let's separate out our skins. Here comes a test. You should be pretty good at freehanding. These, like other pieces, don't have any straight edges. So you're gonna have to freehand them. If you'd like to download the free plans at thehangerrc.com and print them out, you can practice not only in stitching plans together, but you can practice freehanding as well. Not a bad idea. And here's our fourth one. All four skins are separated. Let's line them up. Make sure you have a top and a bottom for both wingtips. Top and bottom. You'll notice I'm test fitting the skin on the side that it gets applied to. This is the inside of the wing. This is the outside. Now that we've got those all test fitted, Let's delaminate. I'm just going to go ahead and delaminate all four wing tips at the same time. Now all four wing tips are delaminated. Make sure I grab the right skin by test fitting. Appears to be. And I'm gonna spray these and laminate these one at a time. Here's number one. Speedball. One. Next one, once again, test fitting to make sure you got the right side. Looks pretty good. Two. Nope, that's the wrong side. There is a front and a back to this paper. The back side is kind of got a yellow hue to it. The front side is pure white. Make sure you don't get that mixed up. That goes there. There's the back. There's the front. The front side is the side that you cut on as if it had a print on it. 
It's okay if you laminate it backwards, your plane will just not look right. It'll have a yellow hue to it. It won't affect the performance of it. There's three. Now for the last one. And four. Now all four wingtips should be done. Now we're getting super close to being done with the skin. And at that point, we'll turn it back over to Kylan to let him show you how to build this airframe. The next pieces we're going to do is let's do the wings. This is the bottom side of the wing as a place for the servo. I'm gonna cut the tabs out once again and see if I can separate this out. There we go. There's a lot of little pieces still left on this foam. Make sure you don't throw away a piece accidentally or you'll have to go to thehangerrc.com and download the free plans and cut your phone out. Set that aside. Punch out this one. I forgot to clean up my mess. Now here we have the bottom two halves of each wing. Let's go ahead and locate the skins that match up to those. There's one. You'll notice on the skins that they also have a place to cut out for the servo. This mark right here is for your center of gravity. Let's set these two pieces of foam aside while we cut out the skin. I'm gonna separate this. Grab my ruler. You notice this didn't cut quite straight. I kind of messed up that one. So I'm just going to trim it up. No big deal. There we go. I must have not quite bit on my line. All right. Now we figure out which is left and which is right. We should lay out like that. This. your left skin and this is your right skin. Now we test fit these. Looks like they fit pretty good. Now we're gonna go ahead and spray them. Once again we've got a score line here. Let's make sure we peel the paper off this side first in order to make sure that that score line stays intact. We've got our skin sprayed. Sometimes when you've got bigger pieces, it's easier to roll it, roll it back on itself like this. This gets your fingers a little bit sticky, so you need to make sure that you're doing it correctly. That you, you need to make sure that you wash your hands afterwards. Line it up, and then just roll it back. Put 
press it down. And cut out our, we can come in through the back side and cut out our servo, where the servo goes. Move on to the next one. Got a little glue there from the sticky from my hands. Once again, you could take your, as long as it's not printed on, you could take your knife and clean that right up. Flip it over, cut out where the servo goes. Now these two pieces are done. Let's move on to the wing, the top of the wing. Locate the top of the wing. It'll be two pieces. One is on that sheet. And one is on this sheet. I'm gonna separate these out really quickly. All right, now let's find our tops of our wings. Okay, let's cut out these aside. Let's cut out our wings, prints. These pieces require just a little bit of free handy. But these are pretty basic. As long as you have a straight edge that will span to 17 and a half inches. Set that one aside. I'm going to go ahead and cut out this small piece really quick. This is for the underside of the aileron. Oh, this is why we always protect our piece. There we go. Make sure you push down hard enough. Okay, put this aside. Let's cut out the other wing. Let's go ahead and laminate these. I'm going to peel off the skin on the side that doesn't have the score line. Uh-oh. I may need to break out the water. No, we're going to be just fine. All right. Test fit this in. Ah, have the wrong piece. I wonder. Make sure you make sure this is the right piece. There we go. That's why we test fit. Now that lines up. I was wondering if that why that wasn't lining up. It's because I had the wrong side. Now that, that lines up, I'm gonna go ahead and spray it. It's critical that you have the right piece of skin going on the right piece of airframe. So always double check and always make sure that you dry fit before you glue it on. Okay, flip the piece over. And now the small piece actually goes right here. And it's okay that it overlaps. Because this overlaps, it actually makes it a lot easier to cut your uh, 45 degree angle on this hinge. Go ahead and remove the paper from this aileron, just like so. 
Test fit that, fits pretty good. Go spray it, line it up. Roll it out. Now we can go back in and we can make our cuts. This cut should be right on the edge. Make that clean that up. And if you can't see the score line, you can look at the edge or hold it up to the light. Once you hold it up to the light, you'll be able to see. You'll be able to see where that score line goes. Grab your ruler. And let's cut this score line back in here. Make sure you line it up. There we go. After you get that score line cut back in there, if you would like to remove this piece of paper, you're more than welcome to, but it's not necessary. Okay, you have a little delamination. Once again, just take some hot glue. Once it's hot glued, it won't come back. It won't come off again. There's the first wing. Let's move on to the second one. Repeat the same process. I'm gonna delaminate the side that doesn't have the score line. If you're building from our plans and you purchase the skin on the hangerrc.com, don't cut through this score line yet. Just have it marked on the foam. That way you'll ensure that this aileron doesn't fall off during the skinning process. Roll it out. Put this, the wing over. Delaminate the aileron, the bottom of the aileron. Dry fit our piece. Make sure it's the right way, once again. Looks like it fits pretty good. Let's go spray it. Now that we've sprayed the strip of skin that goes over the bottom of the aileron, let's apply it. Make sure we line it up. Press it down, roll it out with our speedball roller. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look for the score lines. The first one we can cut through the hinge line we have to look on the edge of the foam board to see where the hinge is before we cut through it. What I did was I went ahead and just punched my knife through the paper so I know where the top of the hinge line is. Once I've got that punched through now I know where the hinge line starts or ends and I can actually go in and use my straight edge or my ruler, my corked back ruler, to make this cut through the skin. Now make sure you don't go through the skin on the other side. You just want to make sure you free up that hinge so that it can be broken free later on in the build. Check your distances from the top of the paper. If you, in, uh, if you installed your skin straight, the distance should be about the same. Go through it a couple times. If you want to pull this little strip of paper off afterwards, you're more than welcome to, but it's not necessary. Now that we've got this side of the wing done, let's clean up our mess. And 
Now we have both halves, top and bottom, of the wings done. Let's move on to the fuselage base plate. Let's move these out of the way. Go ahead and locate the skin for the fuselage base plate and the laser cut foam base plate. Let's punch that out. Once again, cutting these manufacturing tabs, and that should fall right out. Let's set that aside and let's cut out our skin. Once we get the skin cut out, let's do a dry fit. Looks like it lines up perfectly. We're gonna mount the skin on the opposite side that the score marks are on. These marks all will be used at a later time in the build. So make sure you mount these skin, the skin on the opposite side of the marks, the plain white side. Let's go spray it. Bring it back. Line it up. Press it down and let's roll it out with our speedball roller. And now that we have all the skins laminated onto the foam board, let's turn it over to Kylan for the fun part, the build. Let's build the seven. All right. So now that we've gone through and skinned the aircraft, let's start building, start off with the wings. Uh, in order to do that, you'll need the bottom two panels top two panels. On this particular paint scheme, uh, the top two and the bottom two look very similar. There's not a whole lot of detail on them. So be careful, you, get, you make sure you get the correct ones when you need them. Put those to the side. And then we're also gonna need the spars. Just go through, grab a razor blade. Start working those out, making sure you free everything up so you don't have any paper grabbing where it's not supposed to be grabbing. Make sure to free up any of the tabs that are left in there by the laser. All right, now we got that one freed up. Let's grab the other one. And the same thing as this. Make sure you get the few uh, tabs that are left over. Any spots that the laser may have missed. All right, so we got the two of their spars out and free. And we're also going to need our spar doublers for the end. Let's locate those. All right, so in total, you should have eight of these little spacers, four for each wingtip. All right, once you have all those cut out, you should have eight formers and two doublers. The doublers you'll notice slightly shorter than the formers. And for now, we'll just go ahead and set those aside and let's get out the spar. Go ahead and crack all the little joints in the center. Make sure you get those nice and free. Let's put those all the way across and just make sure everything lines up how they should. Everything looks good on that one. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna run a little bit of glue. We're just gonna overlap on this one, all the way down here. And finally on that last little bit, put it flat on the table and make sure to put nice even pressure over everything. You wanna make sure all the glue is nice and dry and cool by the time you uh, remove your hands. 
Otherwise, you can get stringy and it's going to make it a little uneven. You should be good about there. Let's go ahead and flip it over. Let's do a test bit. Make sure to put your doublers off to the side and let's start off with all the formers. Three, four for each wing. Let's go ahead and do a quick test, but you may need to crimp down the edges just to kind of make sure they fit in there without warping the paper at all. That one looks good. Good. All right, all those are fitting in there. So let's go ahead and put a nice healthy bead of, glue, a bead of glue right down in the center there. Let's go ahead and press that down. It's not going to be critical if it's not a perfect 90 degree angle, just relatively straight. Let's go ahead and put some pressure on that, make sure it glues nice and straight. See how many times I can glue my fingers to, to the project. So if you decide that you do want something to kind of help you get it nice and straight, an easy way to go is if you go in this uh, empennage or uh, empennage former. The center section's got a couple right angles on there. So go ahead and pull, uh, cut through those little tabs, pull that out, and as we glue the next one, you press that in there. You can use that as a nice square just to make sure everything is nice and straight. Go ahead and remove any glue that may have seeped out to the sides just to make sure to keep everything nice and even and make sure it's nice and centered in the spar. Not a bad idea. All right, once this is all nice and dried, and you see mine's not perfect, but it does the job. Um, if you want it to be a little bit stronger, a little more reliable as you're trying to form the wing, I just put a quick bead of glue just on the side. I usually just do one. Go through and put that on all four of the formers. Not critical, just makes things a little bit easier down the road. Get any strings that are hiding over there. All right, once those are all dry and nice and solid, grab one of your doublers. This should be one of two. Uh, go ahead and just sit it right on top. You'll see that there's the side that's got a lip on there, the side that is you know, pointing up from the table. Set it on there, make sure everything's lined up nice and neat. And if so, go ahead and lay down just a light bead of glue. Just all along that. And press and hold that in place. This is just going to make it a little bit easier to uh, form the uh, wing tips. Gives it a little bit more material to kind of be pushed against. So those are all nice and lined up. And I usually just use my finger to kind of clear the work area of glue. All right. Once that's nice and solid, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. All right, once you got these all cracked open, make sure those are nice and even to where they should be. Just like on the other one, just try and put a nice quick bead along all these sections. On this final section, just make sure to stop right where that or right where that uh, end of the spar ends, just so you don't get any glue just kind of wandering. And then go ahead and secure that. Make sure to let it dry fully so you don't have to worry about it warping at all. Should only take about 30 seconds. All right, once that's all nice and cooled down, nice and solid, go ahead and do the same thing with all the formers. Just kind of pinch the edges just to make sure they're going to fit in the, uh, not make sure they're going to fit in the slots real nice and neat. Not going to get hung up anywhere. Quick test on those. Those are perfect. Also make sure you have that one last uh, doubler.
And like I said on the last one, it's not critical if these things are you know, perfectly straight up and down. All that matters that are in place, nice and neat. If you have any excess glue kicking over to the side, go ahead and just remove that. Try to scrap piece of foam board, your finger, whatever you prefer to use. And to finish these up, we'll just hurry and do that last final B just to make it a little more secure. And then to finish this off, go ahead and grab your last doubler. A nice LVV down. And just lay it in place. Make sure it's nice and even with the other one. Remove any glue on the outside. There is any seeping out. Go ahead and let it just sit there for about 15 20 seconds just until the glue is nice and cool. All right, now that I got the two of these done, we're going to move these over to the side and put our concentration on the top and bottom surface of the wing. All right, so once you got the two pieces of foam board situated, just make sure that they're both lined up in the same direction. And like I mentioned earlier, on this particular paint scheme, it's really difficult to differentiate between you know exactly where they should be on the other skins it is a little bit easier but just something to take into consideration let's go ahead and grab a piece of tape let's go ahead and put tape on just one side make sure you get it roughly in the center and then just cut it right down at the end just so you're not working with a whole lot of excess tape go ahead and get that pressed down nice and tight and any wrinkles see so if you can work them out a little bit as soon as you have that all situated Go ahead and put the other wing half, line up the inside edges. Go ahead and tack down that side. Grab the other side and just slowly work that tape down all the way, making sure you get a nice, even contact between the two wings. And at that point, you should notice that there's not really any gap in here. If there is, it's no big deal. When you flip it over, it'll be all there. But at this point, that's nice and solid. We're going to flip it over. We're going to fold it right there at that seam. Go ahead and take your razor blade. Just make sure you get a nice, even, ideally a 45, maybe even a little bit steeper than a 45 degree angle cut all the way down both of these edges. Flip it over, look at the other side. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is, is for those of you who aren't comfortable with um, freehanding it like Kylan just did, if you take a straight edge and run it about quarter inch in from the edge you wanna bevel, and then I like these knives, they're um, the little push-up disposable razors as opposed to like an exacto. I extend the blade quite far. And what I do is I take my piece over to the edge of the table and I run the blade right along the tape. You know, if you cut through the score line, it's okay because we can go back and retape it. It's not a big deal. Or not the score line. If you cut through the, the leading edge tape and, tape and foam board, it's okay because we can go back and re retape it. This way it gives you a nice even clean cut and it's not quite intimidating as doing it by hand freehanding it. We'll repeat the same process on the other side. Do a quarter inch. And you can just guess this. Extend your razor, go right up against your ruler, If you need to go back over it, like right here, you can, just to get that little last piece out. Don't cut your fingers. And you should have a pretty good angle 
to make your leading edge on. All right, so once you got that bevel foot in there nice and clean, you should notice you've got roughly 90 degrees. If you have more, it's a good thing. Makes it a little bit easier to fold over the last bit. So what we're going to do now, you'll notice that there's a little score line down the inside of this. We're just going to take the paper on the inside, uh, you know, towards the leading edge of the wing. I'm going to slowly remove all that paper. Slowly pull it back nice and clean. Should come off relatively easily. And you do this on the other side as well. You make sure you get both sides. All right, once you got both of those sides removed, my favorite way of bending this, I usually just put up against the side of the table right next to that crease, put a little bit of constant pressure on that edge and just slowly roll it back. Just keep on rolling until you start to get that bend that you want for the leading edge of that, air, that airfoil. You don't need a whole lot, just to kind of get it started, just to make sure you get that nice even shape. Go ahead and flip it over and do it on the other side. Don't pull your mat off the floor. <laughs> And at this point, if your skin's delaminating at all, go ahead and just drop a couple drops or a couple beads of hot glue underneath it and glue it right back down and you'll be, you'll be golden. All right, once you have both of those sides bent, you notice you flip it over, you got a really nice clean airfoil shape. That's what we're looking for. That way it doesn't crease in the center section where that uh, score line was. Keeps the wing looking nice and clean, really even. Uh, once you got those bends in, go ahead and grab one of your spars. Doesn't matter which side, they're both symmetrical. Um, go ahead and let's just lean it right against this edge next to this little uh, socket sitting right in here. You just want to make sure that everything is going the right direction. You don't glue the wing the wrong way. Should lean right up against that score line. And before we glue anything, let's go ahead and fold that wing over. And just make sure everything is fitting nice and tight like we want it. Should be able to roll over a little bit and create that perfect wing that we're looking for. Once that fits nice and finished, go ahead and take the hot glue gun. Let's just put a nice quick bead all along here and all of these formers. Do that real quick. Let's place the forward edge of that spar right next to that uh, right next to that seam in the center. Go ahead and push that down. Once you have that, go ahead and fold the wing over just so you can apply even pressure to the whole side. Make sure everything is nice and even. Don't rush this. Definitely not. Make sure you take nice and make sure everything's nice and even on this. You want to be careful with this. You want to make sure that glue is completely set before you remove your or remove the pressure. And make sure that nothing delaminates. Everything stays nice and sturdy. All right. Once you have this glue all nice and set, go ahead and open the wing up. Just make sure everything is sticking nice and you know, how it should be. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take a nice healthy bead, put it right here in this crease in the leading edge, and right above here. If you want to do it on the ribs, that's fine. It's not needed. So let's go ahead and put that in there now. Another stick of hot glue. Always make sure you have sticks of hot glue. <laughs> Definitely, you don't want to end up running out halfway through a glue joint. All right, we got to work quickly on this one. So as soon as you get that nice and set, go ahead and fold it back up. Kind of put some pressure on this one wing so it folds it right where you want it. And what I always do, go ahead and set the leading edge right on the ground, kind of work its way over. You'll notice the foam creaks just a little bit. Just kind of working its way in. Just make sure on the inside it's all nice and pressed up against the bottom edge of the wing. We'll do the same thing with the other side. Let's just let it sit for quite a while. You don't want to rush this at all. You want to make sure it's really nice and secure before you release pressure. All right, so as soon as that's all nice and set, you're going to want to take the aileron. Should already have a nice score line in there. If not, you can always put it in now. Uh, go ahead and put that line right on the edge of your table. 
And just slowly add just a little bit of pressure. Make sure nothing's. Look at this. I'm gonna get that first. Yeah. Okay. So once you get that all nice and uh, once you get that all nice and glued, go ahead and flip the wing over so you got the top side up. You'll notice there's a line right where the aileron, uh, the end of the aileron should be. Go ahead and just take that with your knife and just score it. Make sure it's or just go ahead and cut that nice and all the way through. Should be good as is. If needed, though, I always like putting only you know sixteenth of an inch, just a couple of millimeters over to the side. Just make sure it's got a nice space so it doesn't get caught up in flight. Go ahead and just clean that out. Finally, let's see, get our knife in there and just kind of pull that last little bit of foam out. He's a little bit picky. Alright, go ahead and clear that off. And I did notice on mine, that as I was doing that, I did have a little bit of a delamination on the paper. That's no big deal. Just take a little bit of glue, just right on the inside of that. We'll spread it around and just press down with your finger. That'll make it nice and secure. Shouldn't have to worry about that edge falling off or coming apart again. Okay, once you have this little gap in there, you want to make sure it's going to have you know plenty of room. It doesn't matter if it's too big, too small, or too big. You just want to make sure that it's not going to get caught up when flight, so you don't have any issues. Uh, you'll notice the score line on the inside of the aileron should match up right there at the end of the wing, right there. As long as that's matching up right at the edge, let's go ahead and go on to this next step. Let's take it. So that uh, score line is right on the edge of the table. And slowly add just a little bit of pressure and crack that free. You should be able to move it all the way down. And you want to move or you want to bend that all the way until you get to the other surface of the wing. You'll have some delamination, but that's perfectly fine. That'll be taken care of in just a second. Once you get that all the way over, you're going to want to take this to the edge of the table again. I'm not going to use a straight edge, but if you guys need to use a straight edge, go ahead. It makes things a lot easier. Go ahead and get a nice 45 degree bevel all the way down on the aileron side. And this card of the excess material. Let's just make sure you don't have any extra spots. All this excess material is just going to disappear. Because <laughs> that's how it works at home, right? Hey, if you're not making a huge mess when you're building one of these things, there's a problem. All right, now at this point, when you get that nice and beveled, you should be able to bend it all the way down, all the way up. Just go ahead and move it back and forth. Just kind of loosen the paper a little bit. You just want to make sure nothing's too terribly tight. I'll keep on working that until it feels nice and free. Now you notice that we did leave this edge right here completely free of glue. I'm going to address that right now. We just want to make sure that when we do glue that down, we're not securing the edge of the aileron down so you can actually access it. Um, so let's go ahead and make sure that's nice and opened up. And one last time, let's just hurry and put it down to the table. Make sure that lines up right how it should. And if everything's looking good, let's go ahead and put a, put a bead of glue right on this bottom edge, as close to the edge as possible, all the way down the wing. As soon as you get that, go ahead and flip it so the top side's down. And put nice even pressure along the whole wing and just let it sit there. No need to rush this process. Just want to make sure it's nice and tight so you don't have to worry about it coming off mid-flight. Alright, so as soon as that's cooled, go ahead and check and make sure everything is right where it should be. Not overlapping at all. What we're going to do, I'm going to put a final bead right here in this little crevice just to make sure it's nice and strong the wing's not going to delaminate at all. Go ahead and put your nozzle of the hot glue gun sit in there. Go ahead and go back and forth just a couple times to kind of push it into the foam. Let that sit. And also what I'm going to do, you shouldn't have to do this, but it's always a good option, just to make things a little bit stronger. Go ahead and grab just a spare piece of foam. Put a light bead of glue right where the two edges or the two sections of the wing meet together. Not a whole lot of glue, just 
just a little bit. And we're going to press that in. Make sure that it's going to bind the two together seamlessly. Go back and forth a couple times. Put a decent amount of pressure in there. Make sure it's not going to come undone. And finally, on this aileron hinge, go ahead and move it so this, or so that you have a nice flat surface right here. Go ahead and put some glue. Not a lot, just a little bit of glue right on the inside of that. You want to work quickly on this. We can get as much glue out as possible. Grab that scrap piece of foam board and really press it in there. Make sure it's super clean. That's going to make your hinge 10 times stronger than it was before. Let that cool down, run your thumb across it a few times, just make sure nothing coming loose. And as soon as that's nice and dry, go ahead and bend that aileron all the way back down. You should notice it meets right back up with the center of the wing. Nice and solid uh, hinge. Shouldn't have to worry about that coming out at all. That section of the wing's done. Let's go ahead and put that, or let's go ahead and repeat that on the other end of the wing. Once that's all done, let's go ahead and inspect the wing. Just make sure everything's looking nice and clean how it should. You'll notice that oftentimes on the edges, it'll be slightly off. Perfectly fine. Just trim it so it's nice and square. Make sure everything's glued. Got a nice solid surface. Let's go ahead and check the other side of the wing. Remove any of those glue strings that, you know, everyone loves. Make sure that's all nice and even. I right, notice on this one, it's just a little bit off, so let's go ahead and take our razor blade. All right, so let's just grab one of these extending blades. You don't need one if you don't have one, but it always makes it a little bit nicer just so you have that extra room to work with. Go ahead and just kind of run it along the top surface and just score right at the, where it should meet up nice and square. Make sure that's nice and even. And then go ahead and cut off that final little bit. Any excess tape that's sitting here, let's go ahead and cut that off as well. And finish that edge off and kind of inspect it and make sure everything's ready to go so we can glue the two halves together. Now, once the two halves are nice and cleaned up, let's go ahead and put the two intersections in the center. Two airfoil shapes should roughly be the same. If they're not, it's not the end of the world. Let's go ahead and move that. You should notice that once you press them together, it gives me a little bit of an offset, creating a little bit of dihedral. That's all looking how you expect it to look. Let's go ahead and grab a piece of tape. Doesn't need to be very long on this one. Six to eight inches. Go ahead and cut that off. Let's just take one of these wing halves. And behind the center hole, go ahead and put that piece of tape right about in the center so we can get Real nice, clean edge. Go ahead and fold that over. And this is where the two wings are going to meet. Go ahead and press those two up against each other real nice and tight. Once you get the fit how you like it, make sure the leading and trailing edge is roughly in the same spot. Go ahead and press the tape down on that opposite side. And leave that extra tab. We'll be using that in just a minute. Go ahead and flip the wing over. And let's grab our dihedral gauge. 
right, so go ahead and locate your dihedral gauge, just a small, roughly an inch square. Um, what you want to do is you set your wing up right side up and sit that just right underneath the edge of the wing. You should notice that that is right about where the wing wants to sit naturally because the one at the bottom edge is a little bit longer than the top edge. So it's going to automatically give itself just a little bit of dihedral. If that's looking correct, go ahead and remove that, flip it over. And all of these exposed all these exposed edges, we're going to want to fill pretty nice and full with hot glue. Make sure you work pretty quickly so you don't have to worry about it coming undone. Over on this side. And make sure you load up that spar. And make sure you get a nice strong spar so you can really put some force on it when you're flying and not have to worry about it folding. As soon as you get that all set. I usually like to put my finger right here at the leading or at the leading edge, right where the two meet up, just so you can kind of make sure nothing's going to move. And take that small one-inch square and put it right underneath the spar on either side. It doesn't matter which side it's on. All right, now as you're doing this, you want to make sure that this is nice and straight. And also, you want to make sure that this bottom side is nice and flat on the table, so you're not getting an excess of uh, dihedral where you don't want it. Go ahead and keep pulling that, and don't rush this process. You want to make sure this is really tough. All right, after letting it sit for just a little while, like I said, you want to make sure this is nice and cool before you end up moving anything, just so it doesn't really come undone. And see if you can manage to not tape it to the table. <laughs> Go ahead and remove your wing. You just want to make sure it's been sitting long enough that it's not going to delaminate the glue that you just put on there. Go ahead and take that extra flap that you had and just fold it over, press it next to the foam, and just really work that in. That's just going to help make it nice and strong. Let's put it back so the leading or the uh, top of the wing is facing up. Right in this little edge, let's just put a small bead of glue all the way down that. It's kind of falling. And we're going to take an extra piece of foam. Go ahead and take a scrap piece of foam board and just press that down nice and tight. Doesn't need to be pretty. This section is going to be all covered in the fuselage anyway. So go ahead and work that in. At that point, as soon as you have that all situated, go ahead and grab another piece of tape. And find the edge of the tape. There's the edge of the tape. That's a pretty plane behind you. It is pretty nice, isn't it? Available in the store. Shameless plug. Kudos to Sam for building it. That thing's freaking gorgeous. All right, go ahead and take a piece of tape, roughly six inches long. We're just going to take that, center it up on the wing, nice and centered. And let's press that in, really working that tape into the foam. As soon as that's done, go ahead and flip it over, and we're going to do the same thing to this whole edge. Put a nice bead of glue all the way down. I need a counter to see how many times I said nice. <laughs> It'd be hilarious. As soon as you get that on there, take another scrap piece of foam and just work that in, just like you did on the top surface. And then again, let's grab another piece of tape. And this time, before we cut it, I'm actually going to use it right on the edge. We can use the wing to decide how long we need it. Go ahead and press that down. Press it all the way down just to this leading or this trailing edge of the bottom. Go ahead and slice it off there. And press that into the foam real tight. If there's any excess tape in the front, go ahead and just tape that over. And there we go, two halves are joined. Go ahead and set that aside. Next step, let's get those wing tips finished. For this part of the build, I highly recommend getting yourself one of these extending um, blades, or either that or just a really long razor blade. Makes it so much easier. And another thing, sanding blocks. I can't tell you enough how much easier these little guys are 
to finish off with the sending box. These things you can get at the local hardware store, any, you know, you can probably even find them at Walmart if you wanted to. But uh, yeah, they come in handy. Make sure it's a nice rough grit so it re really removes the foam nice and quick. All right, so you're gonna have four pieces to that. Two lefts and two rights. The first thing we're gonna do is the outside edge, just a larger piece of uh, paper that's still sitting there on the outside of this crease. We're gonna go ahead and pull that all off and delaminate all that on all four of them. All right, so there's a few ways to do this next step. The way that I usually do it is I get one of these retractable blades, put it out as far as it will go. Go ahead and put it on the edge of a table, so it's nice and supported. And the longer you spin on these, the cleaner your wing tips are going to look and the better they're going to turn out. So what I always do, like I said, retract it as far out as you possibly can, get it on the edge, and you're just going to work that blade into the foam. We're not worried about a shallow angle, you want to go as deep as you can. how far you can work that in. Go ahead and stay close to the uh, edge of the wingtip. So just go into the foam as far as you can. If you can't get it all in the first pass, no worries. You can always make a second pass. But you'll notice in this, this comes in just over half of an inch. So you really want that to work in. And I'm actually going to go back and see if I can almost double that. Doesn't matter if it's perfectly clean. You'll end up shaping it by hand anyway. Um, this front edge on the inside of the winglet, or on the wingtip, you're not going to want to have to, you're not going to want it to do anything to it. Just leave that nice and square. However, the back, you're going to want to do that same thing. Go ahead and come in from the edge and bring it in as far as you can. Go ahead and go back through that. So you'll notice on this, there's some sections that are even over an inch in that I have it. And I just try to keep it as shallow of an angle as possible. Let's go ahead and do that to all of them. All right, so another way we like to do it, you take a sanding block or a piece of sandpaper, whatever you have. Um, it's really easy, it takes a little while, but that way you can get a really, really precise edge. You just want to slowly work at the foam. Just work at it until it's real shallow angle. This way you can really work into it. Make sure you get that angle you want. Or use a combination. Combination works fantastic. All right, now I like to use a combination between the two, whether it's a, a sanding block and a blade. Blade makes it easy to get the material out really, really quickly. However, the sanding block makes it so you can really finish it off exactly how you want it. Notice how smooth you can get that. How shallow and sharp of an angle that is. Let's go ahead and see if we can get that same thing on all four of them. Okay, so once you get all these cut, beveled, and sanded, you'll notice how nice and smooth that is. You want it to be really sharp. And the sharper you can get this edge, the cleaner it's going to look. What we're going to do is before you glue anything, let's go ahead and start working this foam, kind of bending it in just a little bit. You don't want to go too fast or else you'll start creasing the outside of the foam. But just nice and carefully, just slowly work an angle. 
throughout this whole thing. And make sure you get the edges going in towards the center. And the same with the outside edges, front and rear. Go and repeat that on the next one. Right, so once you've worked that in a little ways, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take both halves and lay them right on top of each other. If you bent them correctly, you'll notice that all the edges line up real clean. And it's really easy to push them all together. So if they all line up how you want them to be, simply remove the one side. Just put a nice, nice healthy bead, nice healthy bead of glue along this outside edge. The outside edge only. Go ahead and take that top side. And just lay it in from the nose end back to the back end. And just kind of carefully press and hold as much as you can. The tighter you make those bevels, the cleaner the end, or the cleaner this is going to look in the end. And keep working that glue into the foam, pressing nice and carefully along the whole edge. Just make sure everything gets a nice even coat of glue. Make sure nothing's lifting. If you look down the edge, you should see a perfectly straight line going all the way down. The straighter that is, the better it's going to look in the end. All right, once that's all nice and cool, let's go ahead and take a final bead of glue right in the back. Give it a pretty decent amount. You want to make sure it's going to be Real, real tough. Put it on the end of the table, and kind of force that glue into the foam, kind of working it up and lifting up that front edge just a little bit, just to get that angle that we're looking for. Go ahead and take an extra scrap. Curved scraps seem to work really well for this one. Take that and just kind of push it in. Really work that glue into the foam. And then move it real quick just to make sure you don't get it glued down to the table. All right. Once you've got that done, you'll notice you have a slight opening right here in this inside. You just want to make sure that everything on the outside is glued down so when you pull out on this, it's not going to come undone. So let's go ahead and just slowly work this out. You can press on the inside if you need to, just to slowly work its way open. So you have about an inch, roughly an inch of a gap on the inside. So once you have this opened up real nice and far, you want to open or you want to go to the uh, wing. On the outside, you'll notice there's some formers. If you take those, you can slowly work your wing tip onto the edge of it. Make sure the we the leading edge is sitting right against the leading edge of the wing. And just slowly work it on there. Keep forcing it back and forth, just making sure that it's going to seat how you want it. Once you get that in there, how it should be, there'll be a little bit of a gap on the uh, bottom and top. That's no problem. You just want to make sure that you get that uh, molded so it fits the outside of the, so it fits the shape of the wing really nice. Once you're satisfied with that, let's go ahead and take this and open it up one final time. Go ahead and use a little bit more force on this than you did before, just to really open it up. And let's go ahead and grab some glue, put it along this outside edge. Use one of our kits. The laser really takes out some of the foam on here, so you want to use a little bit extra than you would normally. So just make sure you get a pretty good amount of glue in there. All right, and this point, you really need to be careful where this leading edge is. So if you take your thumb, sit on the leading edge, and kind of roll it in from there, that makes sure you're not going to have to worry about anything sticking in the wrong spot. As soon as you get that on there, with your other fingers, just kind of push along on the other side of the on the edges of the wing, and really finish that in. Push it up against the edge of the winglet. If you need to, you can use the palm of your hand on the table. So you can really push it in there and make sure that everything is sitting nice and even how you want it. All right, once that's all cooled, what you'll want to do is go ahead and grab a piece of tape. And let's go ahead and set that right about where the aileron starts. You're not going to want to glue the, or you're not going to want to tape the aileron down to the wing tip. Be careful of doing that. You get that situated, really put some force and pull on that to make sure it's seated with the foam really well. 
and then go ahead and cut off that edge. It doesn't matter if it's right next to the leading edge or not. What you're going to want to do is starting from the back, you want to push the piece of front, or you want to push the wing down to where it meets up with the wing tip and just work that tape in to really match those two edges up. When you get to the spar, a little bit more difficult. Just use a little bit more force. It'll eventually work its way to where you want it. All right, at this point, any excess tape, and just run your blade across it. Just to clean that edge up. Go ahead and flip it over. Let's do it to the other side. Just like on the other side, go ahead and take your tape and lean right next to where the aileron meets up with the edge of the wing. Go ahead and roll the tape back. Really apply some force on that to make sure it's nice and tight. Work that down a little bit. And we'll cut that end off. Go ahead and set the tape aside. Really pull that tape. Really force that tape to move the two surfaces together. And on this bottom side, you're going to just fold that piece of tape all the way around. Any little creases, just kind of work it in with your thumbnail. And just keep on working it all the way down to the edge of the weighing tip. Let's go ahead and repeat that same process on the other side. All right. That makes me happy. <laughs> okay, once we finish both these edges, I'm going to kind of look over them, make sure everything is nice and tight how they should be. Make sure you get the tape along the edges real tight. And if that's all looking good, we're done with the wing. Let's move on to the fuselage. All right, so once we got the wing done, time to start on the empennage. We're going to need your main empennage piece, the base plate, and this little empennage former. All right, go ahead and grab your empennage base. Let's start cracking the uh, score line on these. Make sure that all comes out, and we'll just take that act or that uh, outside section, if needed. Go ahead and take a razor blade to it. Real light pressure. You want to make sure you don't pierce through the other side of the foam. Do that on both sides. It makes it a little bit easier to delaminate this paper. As soon as you get that, it should come right off real clean. If not, you can always go back with some sandpaper or the razor blade after and clean it all up. I right, know right here I've got a little bit of extra residue. I'm just going to take that to the edge of the table. Just carefully take that off with the razor blade. Just want to make sure it's clean so you don't have to worry about any edges lifting off when you're trying to form the empennage. All right, once we have these edges removed, just make sure everything is nice and clean. We can go ahead and set that aside. Let's grab the main section for the empennage. You notice that there's two score lines going down the edge right here. The center section of the, phone, of the paper. I'm going to delaminate all the paper right there. Go ahead and start on one edge. Just carefully work your way all the way down. Once you get down to these little fingers, you want to be really careful that you don't end up bending the foam or creasing the paper on the other side. Just go ahead and pull it nice and close to the table. 
Should come off with no problem, especially if you quick kit. Everything comes off nice and clean. Once you have that removed, just inspect that nothing is you know, out of the ordinary. So it seems it's good. Go ahead and set that to the side. And go ahead and with this final piece. If you haven't punched the center section out of this, go ahead and do that now. Should just be four little tabs. Once you have that done, go ahead and set that aside. Let's grab the main section back. All right, we're going to center our focus on this main piece for the empennage. Go ahead and between these two score lines where you just removed the paper, set it on the outs or just on the corner of your table. And slowly work down and put a nice um, put a nice angle on this whole section, kind of like we did at the wings. So just slowly work that in. You don't want to overwork it or else you'll start creasing the foam in places you don't need it. Should leave you with a piece that kind of looks like this. Should be able to carefully bend it over. Can't quite make it all the way. Go ahead and just keep on forming it. Just so that way you don't have to put a whole lot of pressure on it when you're starting to form it for the final fit. Alright, once you have that all situated, you'll notice you have a really nice clean edge, a clean arc there. You want to make sure that you're able to take the um, trailing edge. And just put those all the way over, and you shouldn't have any intense creases anywhere. Should be just nice and clean. You got that taken care of. We're gonna grab the bottom of our empennage and just kind of fit that in place. All that should be able to push be pushed together real nice and carefully. And if everything worked well. You have a real nice clean fit there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and grab a piece of tape and find a clean section on your workbench, a place where you can remove the tape. I'm just going to put some tape down on there. We're going to do our best to cut it in half. There's no reason to have the full width there. Go ahead and put a nice quick. Doesn't need to be perfect. Let's see if we can remove one of those halves. If you're able to get that, go ahead and flip your empennage bottom over. Put the tape along there, right around the half the halfway mark on the tape, all the way down. Pull it nice and tight, and then just work that into the paper. So you don't have to worry about it coming undone. Once you're satisfied with that fit, we'll make sure to match up these two edges. Put them real nice and close. As soon as you're happy with that fit, I usually start from the center and work out. Slowly press the tape onto the empennage itself, just so it works its way in nice and clean. And any extra tape you have here, go ahead and cut that off. You can always trim anything else later on. You want to make sure you've got a nice final fit by taking the bottom of the imp notch, and that should fold up at a 90 degree angle to this plate right here on top of the main imp notch. If that's all looking good, go ahead and open up the seam and put glue right on the inside of this angle, so that way it has contact with both the bottom and the side of the empennage. Go ahead and just a quick bead through that. Put that up. If you have a way of getting a nice 90 degree angle, go ahead and use that now. Once that's all set, let's go ahead and take a final bead and just work that into this crease on the edge over here. Not completely necessary, but it's always good to make it a little bit stronger if you can. All right, now we have that set. We're going to take that final piece of tape that we cut in half earlier. Let's go ahead and pull that up. And we're going to want to put it right around the halfway mark, kind of like we did on the other side, all the way down this right here. Carefully work it in so you don't have any creases. And once you're satisfied with that fit, without taping the pieces together, your final fit up, just make sure everything 
goes together. If everything looks good and it matches up how you want it to, remove that and we'll put a bead of glue right on the inside of this edge right here. All right, once you have that in there, go ahead and roll it around. I'm gonna act pretty quick on this one. If you need to, go ahead and press down on the table, get it nice and even. If that's where you want it, then rotate it around so you're pushing the tape up against the bottom plate. Move it just a little bit, and that way you can work it in finally with your fingers, and you should have a really nice 90 degree edge. Once that's sitting in there, go ahead and take your razor blade and just remove any excess tape. All right, once that's all taped and you got that cleaned up how you want it, all right, and to finish off the empanade, go ahead and grab that last little former piece. What we're gonna do, we're gonna set it on the inside. We're gonna push up against it real hard and make sure that everything lines up perfectly. Make sure it's nice and flat, the outside edge. And if everything's how it should be, it should match up right out here and here, and it should give you that real uh, precise edge. If that all looks good, go ahead and remove this, and let's put a bead of glue on the outside of all this. All right, so as soon as that's nice and cool, go ahead and take your glue gun. You're gonna go along this outside edge, just along the seam between the two pieces. Grab a scrap piece of foam. I'm just gonna work that into the edge just to make it nice and strong. And go across it a few times. Once you're satisfied with that, go ahead and set the empanage aside. And let's go and grab the vertical and horizontal uh, stabilizer. All right, before we get started on those, you're gonna to wanna to grab your 3D printed parts. Go ahead and set those over here so they can be at the ready. Let's start off with the elevator. If you look in here, there's a little uh, section that's cut out. That's going to be for this little elevator wave. Once you get that all cleaned out, you want to make sure that you get this slot put in there for your control horn. All right, I'm going to go through before I do anything. It's going to kind of help the score go through. You don't want to put a whole lot of pressure. You don't want to make sure you want to make sure you don't cut through the paper on the other side, but just deep enough that you cut through all the foam. So at this point, go ahead and grab your 3D printed elevator brace. I'm just going to do a quick test fit. Sit that right in there. If everything is correct, it should fit in there real nice and tight. If that's the case, go ahead and remove it. And let's pump that full of hot glue. Nice healthy amount of glue in there. Go ahead and insert that 3D printed brace. And really push that into the foam. It should seat right about flush with the top surface once it's all the way down. Once that's sitting in there, go ahead and take a little bit of glue and go over the top surface and grab a spare piece of foam and just go over that, really seating that into the foam, making sure you're going to have a full layer of glue above it just to make it nice and strong. All right, as soon as that's cooled down, what we're going to want to do, go ahead and take your elevator and put that score right to the edge of the table, kind of like we did on the aileron and just slowly push down, crack that foam open. And slowly work it until you can get it as far open as possible. Unlike on the aileron, uh, we're going to want to take and put the uh, 45 degree bevel, the bevel, the 45 degree bevel on the uh, vertical stabilizer side instead of the elevator side just to make sure this is as strong as it can be. We'll go ahead and put that on the side of the table. 
I'm gonna use a longer blade to make it a little bit easier. Let's go ahead and make that bevel. All right, as soon as you have that bevel cut in there, if there's any excess, if you have a sanding block or any sandpaper or anything, I recommend just hurrying and running it across that just to make sure you get that foam down to the paper as close as possible. All right, once you get to that point, go ahead and take your glue on. Put a light bead of glue all the way down the seam. Grab a spare piece of, of uh, scrap foam. And just work all that glue in. Really push that glue down. You want to make sure it's as pressed in there as possible. So you're leaving the least amount of glue as possible in there. All right, as soon as that's all cooled down, go ahead and move the elevator up and down just to kind of loosen that joint. Just go back and forth a few times. Make it so it's nice and free. Let's go ahead and grab your rudder. Take your razor blade. Go ahead and run your razor blade through the score line, just down to the paper. You want to make sure you don't apply too much pressure so you don't cut through the paper, but you just want to make sure you free everything up. All right, so at this point, let's go ahead and do exactly what we did on the elevator. Put that score line right on the edge of the table. And crack that foam open. Keep working that fold. And do that with a small nub as well. You usually don't have to use this against the table. You can just do it with your fingers. Once you got that folded over to where you want it, go ahead and take preferably a long razor blade, set it up to the side of the table. We're going to do another one of the 45 degree bevels. All right, when you're doing this, make sure you do the bevel on the uh, vertical stabilizer side. That way you'll leave as much material on the rudder as possible, especially down at this bottom part. You don't want to make sure you cut into the uh, little slot where the uh, control horn is going to be. Once you get that bevel cut, go ahead and take a, sand, a piece of sandpaper or sanding block if you have one, and just work that edge. Once you got that to how you like it, go ahead and take your hot glue gun, run a thin bead across that line all the way down on both pieces. Grab a scrap, scrap piece of foam board, go ahead and push that into the foam as hard as you can without creasing the foam at all. all right, just like on the elevator, since this is cooled down, go ahead and just bend the uh, joint back and forth. Just make sure you're freed up. If anything is Rubbing where you don't want it to, go ahead and take the sandpaper to it, free it up. Make sure to do this on the top and that bottom little section as well. And if all that's how you like it, let's go and take your razor blade. In the section where the control horn is going to go, let's go and take the paper and the foam out of that section to free it up. Once you got that all cleaned out, go ahead and set this aside and let's go and grab the empanage. Once you have that out, you want to take a look at these little sections down here. On the uh, horizontal stabilizer, go ahead and take a long blade or a short blade if that's all you have. Cut parallel to the bottom of this plate just to make sure that you have a nice surface for your elevator to rest on. Make sure there's no paper that's getting in the way, no extra foam you don't need. All right, once you have that cleared out, you should be able to see right through that nice and nice and parallel to the bottom, just to make sure you have a nice opening for your elevator. Now what we're going to do with this top section, you see how it comes together right here. You're going to cut down straight down the empennage. You're going to want to clear that all out to make sure you have a real uh, open gap for your rudder to go into.
soon as you have that all cut, you should be able to see that if you open this section up, it goes straight down to the bottom of the empennage, creating a real nice gap for the rudder to slip into. So first, let's grab the elevator. Uh, and I've got a little bit of paper still sitting in here, so I'm just going to hurry and finish cutting that out. Just to create these slots so we can make sure that the rudder fits in there. Go ahead and take your rudder and press down the edges of the tabs just to make sure it'll fit in. A lot easier, you don't have to worry about bending the tape, the paper. Go ahead and fold this piece back, which makes it a little bit easier to get in. Slide the elevator through that little slot. See if you can get the uh, tabs on the vertical stab to go down through the elevator. If everything works right. You have a 90 degree angle to sit in there. The uh, hinge line should be matched up right here in the center. And everything should be nice and flush. If that's the case, let's quick, quickly do a dry fit. Let's open up this little slot that we just created here. The razor blade. Feed the elevator and the vertical stab stabilizer all the way down. You may notice down here, you're going to have to create a little bit of a gap. If that's the case, go ahead and remove this. Take one of your razor blades and just slowly work that out so you have an area for your for that little tab to go into. All right, once that's opened up, let's go ahead and try again. So we can get that fitting in there. All right, and if everything went right, everything should have seated really well. And you should notice the edge of the empennage comes up to the rudder and the elevator. Really clean looking and everything fits perfectly. All right, if everything's fitting how it should, we're gonna go ahead and take the elevator and the rudder, do a final dry fit, make sure everything fits in there how it should. And if everything is looking perfect, go ahead and remove that and set it to the side. I'm gonna take a bead of glue and just go right along the center line right over here. Let's go ahead and set that rudder, those rudder tabs into the elevator. Go ahead and press that in there firmly. And go ahead and take a square, doesn't matter if it's just an edge of a piece of foam board that you have laying around or what it is. Go ahead and use that just to make sure you have a perfect 90 degree angle. And then let that dry. Alright, once that's dry, go ahead and take the glue gun and let's just go along the edges over here. Keep the paper from delaminating on the inside, also keep it just a little bit more sturdy. And we'll let that dry. Yes. I'll have to take a nub out of here. Just come up and go. Yeah, so I just went and cut a little bit of this edge off of the square just to make sure that it doesn't get stuck in the glue that I have sitting in here. Now I can still get that good angle and I don't have to worry about it getting stuck to the control surface itself. Alright, once that's all cooled down, let's go ahead and slide that through the slots we created earlier. There's one final check, make sure everything is sitting how it should. If you want to make sure as you're setting that in, this little tab on the bottom of the rudder slips right in here to the bottom of the empennage. That just acts as a little bit of a strengthener to make sure everything stays strong and sturdy. If everything looks good, go ahead and move it back just a little bit. Not enough to make this come out, just enough to get some glue in these little slots down here. Let's go ahead and pump some glue in there. A little bit in here. A little bit on this edge as well. 
I'm going to go ahead and push that in. Any excess glue, go ahead and remove. Whether it's your finger or a piece of, a piece of uh, excess foam, whichever you prefer. All right, let's go ahead and put some glue down in this little tab down here. Make sure that doesn't come undone. Go ahead and apply glue to both sides. And then finally, you're going to put some glue along all of these edges, both on the top and the bottom. All right, let's let that dry. All right, now that we're done with the empanage, let's go ahead and set that aside. Let's put our focus on the fuselage. All right, let's go ahead and get all our parts together for the fuselage. We have the main, the top section of the fuselage. So we've got the cowling, and you've got the two firewalls. One of those has two squares on there, one does not. The one that has two squares on there will be used for your cowling. That one is going to have you position your motor mount. And we're also going to need to look for these doublers to be used on the side of the, or the side of the fuselage just to make it a little bit stronger. Let's go ahead and set those two aside. Let's put our focus on the firewall piece without the square and your main empanage, or your main fuselage piece. Go ahead and run your razor blade through this top section. Get this score line nice and clean. As you do that, let's remove this front section. All right, as soon as you have that section removed, let's grab these two outer sections right here. We're going to take the paper on top of that, and we're going to remove that. All right, once the paper is removed on that side, slowly bend both of these edges we get a nice 90 degree angle between the two pieces. Should look roughly something like that as soon as we get that all done. Go ahead and do the other side. You want to make sure you focus most of your pressure on this inside of the crease. If you put too much over here, you'll notice that you have a pretty sharp crease there, and it doesn't look quite as good. Once that's all set up, you should be able to put, you should be able to fold that across, and your former right in here you should fit in there real nice. Let's go ahead and put those down. Just make sure they fit. Should be nice and flush with everything else. That looks how it should. Go ahead and put a bead glue just along the inside of this and around the edges. And go ahead and firmly press that in place. Go ahead and repeat the same thing for the other side. Make sure it fits like it should. Let's go ahead and glue it down. All right, once that's secure, go ahead and grab the uh, back plate of the firewall. I'm going to rest that up against this corner. Let's roll it around so everything looks right. Let's go ahead and put a bead of glue along this edge, and I'll go ahead and glue this piece in.
Uh, once that piece is attached, we'll go ahead and put that aside. Let's put our focus on the cow. Just like we did on the other piece, go ahead and run your razor blade through this crease. Not deep enough to cut through the paper, but just enough to get it through the foam. And let's go ahead and remove that little bit of, paper, of uh, foam. Go ahead and make sure that's nice and clean. And if everything's looking good, just like on this other piece, we're going to take these two sections of foam and just delaminate the paper. Let's go ahead and take this, just like we did on the other piece, just slowly work that edge until you get 90 degrees between the two plates. Good. Make sure those folds look nice and even. There's a final fit. Go ahead and just do a rough attachment of this piece. And when you're gluing this in, you want to make sure that the two squares that you see here are facing forward. Uh, that's going to be your markings for the motor mount. All right, go ahead and grab your motor mount. It's going to be the piece that has four large sections and four small sections, or five large sections and four small sections. The score line. Notice the score lines are about the width of a piece of foam. Go ahead and crack along both edges, along all of those. And we're going to want to pull those out. All right, once we have those pieces removed, what we're going to do, we're going to do just kind of a rough fit. Let's see which lines match up. Go ahead and line the largest piece, or one of the large pieces, up with the front of the square. And you'll take this and fold it across so that it meets up with the, with the edge of the square that's sitting over here. Same thing with this side. And then to finish it off, Go ahead and put that on the inside, and that should create a rectangle that is the perfect size to fit on these two rectangles you see over here. All right, and on this end piece, notice that there's a much larger gap. What that's going to be used for is as soon as we finish this all off, that's going to go around and make it so it's a real nice, clean uh, finish, real nice and strong. If that's how it should fit, go ahead, open that back up. Let's, be, let's put a bead of glue through here all three of these places, and then finally, over here. Go ahead and apply some glue in each one of those sections. And let's go and match it up again to that rectangle again. Going to first on the inside, second on the outside, third on the inside, and finishing that edge off on the outside. Go ahead and press that in. Make sure everything looks like it matches up with the rectangles on that firewall. And go ahead and hold that until it cools. All right, and finally on this little flap that we have remaining here, go ahead and put just a little bit of glue right in this seam. And I usually like to put it against the table. And just kind of move it out just to make sure we get that glue covering that piece of paper. And that should make a real nice clean seam there. Go ahead and set that aside. Let's put our focus on this firewall. So you take a razor blade, lift up the edge of the uh, inside of this rectangle, and pull that up, and that'll leave you with a full rectangle on the inside. What we'll want to do is we want to take a, take all this foam that's on the inside and remove as much of that as possible while leaving this inside rectangle.
All right, once you have that slot all nice and cleaned out, go ahead and take your motor mount that you've formed earlier. I'm just going to sit that and press it straight in. Everything is formed correctly. It should fit in real nice and tight. If that all looks correct, go ahead and remove it. A nice healthy bead of glue along this whole inside. And we'll reinsert the motor mount. Alright, let's go ahead and put a bead of glue around the motor mount. All right, let's go ahead and grab ourselves one of our motors. They're available at thehangerrc.com. Um, these are the motors that we use in, so far, the Vulture and the 7. Uh, they're little 2212, 10-turn, 1400 kV motors. Um, we'll need to solder on some bullet connectors so we can use it on the ESC. Let's go ahead and remove that from the packaging. All right, so let's go ahead and grab our 2212 motor available at thehangerrc.com. Go ahead and set that in our helping hands. This just makes it a little bit easier to solder, kind of help things out. Let's go ahead and grab some 3.5 millimeter. These will be the male adapters, or the male ends of the uh, bullet connectors. And let's go ahead and tin the insides of these. All right, once all our wires are tinned, let's go ahead and heat up our uh, bullet connector. We'll go ahead and do that in the same thing on all three wires. And let's go ahead and grab some of our heat shrink, just so we can cover up those bullet connectors to protect anything from shorting out. All right, once we have the three of these soldered on, let's go ahead and set the soldering equipment over to the side and pull back our firewall with the motor mount pre-installed. Go ahead and also grab yourself the 3D printed motor mount. In the accessory bag that comes with the motor, you'll notice there's four small black, uh, black screws. Go ahead and use those, or get all four of those. We're going to use that to attach the motor to the uh, or to the uh, 3D printed motor mount. All right, and just to finish these off, I'm just going to put a little dab of hot glue just on the heads of these screws. Just to help prevent from backing out. Once you have that done, let's do a quick test fit. That square should fit real nice and even. With all the three D printed or with the three D printed um, motor mount, if that all looks good. Let's go ahead and load up that motor mount with some hot glue. You want the wires from the motor pointing down, so that way we can get them to go through this small channel. 
created in the firewall. As soon as you have that position, go ahead and press nice and firm. Make sure to get that motor with as much contact with the glue as possible. Go ahead and remove any excess hot glue. I'm just going to grab a scrap piece of foam. I'm going to put some glue around all these edges and make sure I use that scrap piece of foam to really uh, push that glue into the edges. Make sure we have as much contact as possible with the motor mount. Once that motor mount's all secure, go ahead and grab your cowl. And we're going to do a final dry fit just to make sure everything fits in there without rubbing on the motor or any other parts. All right, and everything is right, and if nothing is rubbing and everything looks like it should be, or it is where it should be, let's go ahead and remove the cowl, put some glue on this trailing edge, and let's glue that piece in. All right, and as soon as that's cooled down, I'm just gonna go on the inside, right around here, just where you can reach with the glue gun, and just put another bead glue in there, just to make sure it's as strong as it can be. At this point, we're ready to pull out the rest of the fuselage that we made before. If everything is how it should be. You should see that meets up real nice and creates a perfect seam between the two parts. All right, if everything between these two pieces match up exactly how you want them, what you're going to do is go ahead and take it either side, doesn't matter. And you're going to want to put a nice healthy amount of glue along the whole platform, all the way across everything. Once you have that on there, I'm going to go ahead and use the table as a flat surface to kind of help me align everything. Let's get it set up. Go ahead and press the two parts together. Add a pretty decent amount of force. You want to make sure this doesn't move so you can get it as precise as possible. And go ahead and hold that for a little while. Make sure it cools completely before you let go. All right, so let's go ahead and grab our uh, fuselage bottom plate. The way we made these, we have a couple different options of what you can do. Uh, the way I'm going to use it, you notice there's a score cut that goes all the way across here. I'm just going to flat out go and cut that all the way across. And these two circles, those you definitely want to cut out. Um, those will be used for ventilation for the motor, for the ESC, just to make sure everything stays nice and cool. Um, if you're going to use this section and keep everything else, um, you just want to make sure that once you have this all cut out, you're just going to take your hot glue gun and pump these little lines full of glue just to make sure they're nice and strong. They're not going to really give on you when you're trying to form it. So let's get started by removing these two circles. Just take your time on this. You just want to make sure it's going to be as accurate as possible because you'll be able to see these from the outside. All right, go ahead and pop that circle out. Once you have that taken care of, I like to just take the end of my knife or whatever it is that you're using and go ahead and just on an angle, kind of bevel those edges in. It just makes it look a little bit cleaner. Go ahead and do that a couple times. You can definitely see the difference that it makes. Let's go ahead and do the other side. And let's repeat the exact same thing. Pull up the side. <laughs> Horrible sound. <laughs> I was bad myself. I can't imagine what it sounds like in the audio. <laughs> Headphones user, please be cautioned. 
I'm going to do that same thing, just beveling this inside, just to make it look a little bit nicer. All right, and like I mentioned, there's a few different ways you can use this, but I'm going to use this line, just cut all the way across. Let's go ahead and do that. Go ahead and make a couple of passes. It doesn't hurt to go slowly. Let's pull that guy off. I'm also, just for looks, I'm going to take this section out. Let's go ahead and pop that out. And I'll do my best to get that arc cut out as well. All right. I'm also going to use the edge of my knife just to kind of round that one out as well. That leaves us with that. All right, so now what we need to do is we're only going to leave two sections of foam with the paper still on it. We're going to leave this section and this section right here. All of these lines on the outside and this line in the center all needs to be completely removed of both paper and foam. So let's go ahead and get started with that. All right, once you have that cut out to where you want it, last thing we're going to do is this plate right here doesn't need the paper on it, so let's hurry and remove that. All right, once we have the paper removed from that, do make sure to keep the paper on this side right here. You want to make sure that's as rigid as possible. But just like we did on the wings and you know, all the parts in the empennage and the fuselage. We're going to take this, put it across the edge of the table, and we're going to make that nice and bent. Uh, that way we can get to line up with this edge right here. All right, as soon as you get that about to where you want it, you should have a bend, something similar to that. Uh, let's hurry and do a quick dry fit. I'm gonna make sure that these tabs, or this tab in the center, lines up with these little uh, formers in the center. Let's go ahead and place that. Should be a pretty tight fit. And if everything bent correctly, Should look something like that. Real clean looking. Everything should line up just how you want it. If everything looks good, let's go ahead and remove. I'm gonna start by folding this back, put some glue on the inside of here and on the inside of here. Let's get that pressed down. And any excess glue, go ahead and remove that. And we'll just let that sit until it's completely cured. All right, as soon as that's all cooled down, go ahead and remove this back section. We're basically doing the same thing that we did in the front, but this one's a little bit easier since it's all flat instead of curved. Just go ahead and put a pretty decent amount of glue down there, just make sure it's going to stick. So you got as much on there as you want. Put it in place. Let's hold a pretty decent amount of pressure on there, just making sure everything is straight and everything is going to be secure. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do, if you notice, there's just these little bits of paper that's still hanging out there. 
I'm just going to go and make it so it's a little bit cleaner. I'm going to go and cut those guys off. Yeah, on both sides. All right. Once we have that done, go ahead and inspect everything. Just make sure everything is real nice and tight. There's no glue joints that came loose. Or, and just make sure everything's nice and how it should be. If everything checks out, it's time to put the empanage and the fuselage together. All right, so let's go and get ourselves a couple pieces of tape, you know, two to three inches long. We're gonna want two of those. Go ahead and just set them on the side of your table just so they're ready. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the empanage and the fuselage. We're gonna line those two. It should line up nice and clean down at the bottom. Everything should line up and look great. So if that's the case, let's go ahead and get one of your pieces of tape that we just cut. I'm just going to put it across, roughly halfway across on the fuselage. Fold that piece back so we can easily get the fuselage or the empennage uh, aligned. As soon as you get that where we want it, let's go ahead and press it together real nice and tight and allow that tape to fall over and secure itself. Go ahead and rub that in. Let's go and check the other side. If that looks right as well. Let's go through and just put a nice healthy bead of glue right here on this seam. I'm gonna make sure to use a pretty decent amount of glue here. This is gonna be a pretty massive structural point in the fuselage. As soon as you get that all situated in there, let's go ahead and have that set. And just as a reference, I'm going to use the table to kind of help me out, as well as I'm going to use the other side of the fuselage just to kind of decide where it needs to be sitting. So let's just go ahead and let it sit there for a little while. As soon as it's secured, we'll go into the other side. All right, as soon as that side is cooled, let's go ahead and get into this other side. Put a nice piece of glue on both surfaces. And just make sure you load it up. As soon as you get a chance, go ahead and grab that piece of tape, line up your fuselage, and let's put that final piece of tape on to secure them. I'm going to go on the inside and just put a little more hot glue in there. Just make sure we get it as strong as possible. Make sure to leave this little recess clear of any glue. That'll be a uh, support point for your one of your servos to go into. Now the two halves of the fuselage are together. You got a nearly completed fuselage. Let's go ahead and put that to the side and let's grab our main wing. All right, so go ahead and take your fuselage and your wing. What we're going to do is we're going to sit the fuselage and put the wing right in the re in the hole that was created for the main wing. All we're going to do is just going to try to make sure we can carve away the small parts that need to be removed to make sure the wing fits in there really nice and tight. So let's go ahead and do that. You notice on this one, it's a little bit tight right here and down at the bottom. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in with the razor blade and just slowly start shaving it away until it fits in exactly where I want it. With each small adjustment you're going to make, you just want to try, see what you need to do on the next run, and just keep on making adjustments until it fits.
The reason we designed the fuselage like this is we noticed that every time you make one of these wings, any really, really any wing as far as scratch building goes, there's always a little bit of variation between each one. And so we wanted to make sure that we would leave a little bit of extra material there so that way, you know, no matter how your wing ends up, you can cut it to be exactly right. Make sure you have a real nice tight fit. All right, and finally, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the wing in here. You're gonna notice that it overlaps the bottom of the empennage just a little bit. So let's go ahead and get the wing in there. Let's make a quick score mark. Okay, so once you get your wing all fitted in there, you get, you're pretty satisfied with how it all fits. Um, what you're gonna wanna do, make sure everything is nice and clean. Um, as soon as you're ready to mount the wing, what you're gonna do is just take a whole lot of hot glue all the way around these two edges. And I'd even put a bead right down here and right across here. As soon as we get that on, we'll be able to mount the wing. Make sure that the center line of the wing is as close as possible to the center of the fuselage. And that'll give you the perfectly uh, 90 degree angle between the fuselage and the wing, and let's get to it. Alright, it'll work fast. Go ahead and press that nice and tight. Make sure you hold it on there for quite a while. You want to make sure it doesn't come undone. All right, so once that initial layer of glue is completely set, what you're going to want to do, take your hot glue gun and go on the inside as well as the outside of the wing. Just make sure you put a pretty healthy bead of glue in there. Make sure nothing's going to come loose at all. And finally down here where the bottom of the fuselage meets with the end of the wing. And at the leading edge, or the uh, trailing edge of the wing, right next to the empennage. Alright, as soon as that's all set, the wing's mounted. It's time to go on my favorite part, <laughs> the canopy. All right, so let's get onto the canopy. So you're gonna need five different pieces. You're gonna need the canopy itself. There's gonna be the base plate. There's gonna be the back former, the front former, and this little piece that helps keep it onto the fuselage in the front tab. That just helps the, uh, the uh, just cut that part out. Oh well. Okay, let's start off with the base. You'll notice that there's lines, one foam board thick along the inside. So all we're going to do with those, we're just going to uh, finish that score all the way through to the bottom, but make sure not to cut through the bottom uh, sheet of paper. And we're just going to simply remove that foam board like we have earlier in this build.
as soon as you have the outside of this removed, go ahead and set it aside. Let's get on to the canopy itself. So what we're going to do here is we're going to delaminate all this paper. Let's go ahead and get to it. All right, as soon as we have all this delaminated, we're going to do what we did on the front of the uh, fuselage as well as the wings. All right, as soon as we got the paper removed, we're going to form the canopy just like we did on the fuselage on the edge of the table. I'm just going to slowly work it. Don't use too much pressure. You don't want any heavy lines in it. Just make sure you're nice and careful with the bends. All right, now as you're doing this, make sure you really take your time with it. I'm going to make sure that you're really careful not getting any bends you don't want. But also, the longer you spin up, the more careful you are with it, the better the result in the end will be. All right, and as you get it formed, you'll start to notice that you can kind of fold the pieces together. They line up really, really nicely. So once you start getting that kind of fit, just work it a little bit more so it naturally wants to fold to those um, to those certain lines. All right, so as you're forming and gluing it, one thing that really helps is if you take just small pieces of tape on the inside, it kind of helps hold it as the glue is drying, makes it so it's not as hard, makes it a little bit quicker and easier. Go ahead and start bending the back side a little bit more than you have the other sides. You just want to make sure you get that really nice and even, and just as before, make sure you take your time. As you get that worked out, go ahead and grab the rear former for your canopy and just kind of start placing that in the in the back of the canopy just so it's flush with the back edge. Just keep working until you get the same shape of the former. As soon as it meets up real nice, go ahead and do one last final dry fit and let's glue it together. All right, I'm going to grab a roll of tape. I'm just, I'm just going to go and cut just a few small pieces just to have it ready if we need them for when we're forming the rest of the canopy. All right, as soon as that rear former is all glued in, uh, go ahead and start bending the uh, next set of fingers. Just slowly get those to form to about where you want them. And again, you definitely want to take your time on this process. More time spent on it, the better it'll end up looking. Once you get it about to where you want it, go ahead and get a nice healthy bead of glue in there. Start pressing them together and use those pieces of tape that we just cut to help that or to help the uh, two parts hold together as they're drying. Make sure to get the nozzle of the hot glue gun in these cracks as much as you can, just to make sure it's as strong as possible. Definitely found it to be the easiest if you just start from the back and just keep on working your way forward. Yeah, rib by rib, finger by finger. Now that we got this all uh, folded and glued, let's go ahead and grab the bottom plate. Let's just do some test fitting. This canopy, you know, anything that's scratch build is going to take a little bit of modification just to make sure everything is nice and tight um, and that the fit and finish is on. So let's hurry and get this on the bottom plate and start making sure everything is looking how it should, 
If we need to make any slight modifications, shave down a few spots, make a few cuts, let's go ahead and do that now. All right, after just a little bit of trimming, I've got it to right around where I want it. So now, just holding on to the bottom plate and the main part, let's just quickly do a slight fit. Maybe just a little bit tight. If so, we'll just trim some material off the front. Fit in the back is looking perfect. Let's go ahead and trim just a little bit of material off the front. That right there is exactly where I want it. So let's grab our front former. Try to shove it in there. If there's anything that needs to be moved on that, let's go ahead and remove that. All right, so we get that piece in. Once you get it trimmed, you should be able to just kind of slide it in the bottom where you remove this material over here. If everything fits how it should, once you press that down, you have a nice clean finish right along there. You notice there's a bit of a gap right in here. That'll be filled up with this little guy. And that's just going to help keep the canopy where you already need it. I'm pretty happy with that fit. So let's do one final test with this. I like it. So let's glue it. Let's go ahead and remove this part. And this part's a little more difficult than a lot of other parts in the build. You just want to make sure you act fast, but make sure you know still take your time getting everything where you need it. And make sure you hold down the pressure. Don't let it go until you know dang well. Until you know that all the hot glue is completely cooled down. All right, as soon as that's all dried, go ahead and take that last former. Just do one final fit, just make sure everything is exactly where we want it. If everything looks good, everything seems to be in place. Should be able to hold itself in there. Let's do a quick test real quick. Sure, it fits in there exactly how I want it. I am pretty happy with that fit. So, let's get it glued. Instead of taking that piece out, I'm just going to kind of bring this lip down, glue it straight into that. I'm going to use the table to keep that nice and flat. You want it on the top. Kind of use the hot glue gun to create a little bit of space just to make sure you've got plenty of space to work with. As soon as you've done that, go ahead and fill that up with glue. And get it in for the final fit. Okay. The last part. Let's hurry and clear 
a little bit of a section here. You can kind of see where the laser is taking out a small section to fit this. You just need to finish that off by giving it just a little bit more of a gap right on this side of the foam. So let's go ahead and give it a little bit more space there. Try and do a test fit, a test fit on that. Everything looks good on that, so let's go ahead and glue it in. As I'm gluing this, I'm also putting a little bit of pressure downward. So instead of having it go at a perfect 90 degree angle from this final plate, I'm having it go in pretty substantially. Just that way it's a little bit easier to get the canopy on. It's still going to be able to do this job really well. I'm just finishing it off with a couple beads of glues. A couple... <laughs> That's word from Khan in 2019. It's a couple light beads of glue. I'll go ahead and let the table kind of help me out with this part. All right, canopy is done. Try and get that sitting there in the airplane. And there we go. Other than electronics, there's a finished seven. So let's get to electronics. All right, let's go ahead and gather electronics. I've got these four Metal Gear 9 gram servos from the HangarRC.com. Get the four of those. I've got a uh, Volantex 30 amp ESC and a simple servo tester. All I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my three cell battery. This one in particular is a 2200. This is what we fly the seven on. So we're going to plug in. Okay, we're going to plug in the uh, wire from the ESC. All right, now the servo tester. Go ahead and plug in the servo or the uh, battery. You notice the lights come on on this servo tester. Currently, it is sent to manual. There's three different settings on this. There's the manual, neutral, and auto. So let's grab our first servo. Put the servo arms aside. You plug these in. Not sure if you can hear it or not, but you can. They're moving, so I'm going to move the knob on here. And on the neutral option, that makes sure that we know exactly where the center is as far as the potentiometer on the servo is concerned. So that's what we really need to pay attention to. So with this centered on neutral, let's go ahead and grab one of our uh, single arms. and put that 90 degrees to the servo itself. Go ahead and push that on. Grab the screw from the bag that secures the uh, servo arm to the servo. That's nice and tight. That way you can see the servo is moving. And as soon as I decide to center it, it's going to be perfectly centered every time. Let's go ahead and pull that one off, and let's repeat that for the next three.
All right, so once you got all your servos centered, we're looking at, let's see. So once you get all your servos centered, we need a left, a right, and then two servos that are centered with the arm going straight out to the short side. All right, so once you got your servos, we're gonna put those in position. You notice that right now we just have the square. This allows you to kind of choose whatever you want this end on the far side or on the front side. I personally like the shorter arms, so I'm gonna keep it on the far side. So what I'm gonna do is with this put in place, I'm gonna kind of press down on it, see if I can get a little bit of a crease, and also just kind of take your razor blade to it and get a rough, um, get a rough outline of where your servo lies. Once you have that, go ahead and cut all the way through and just finish that little bit off. And you can see when I put a, when I put pressure on the servo, it made a little indents here, 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 and here. And that's just going to be for the small arms that poke out. So just to make it so it secures in the uh, foam board stronger, I'm going to go ahead and cut those out. Let's go ahead and do a quick test fit. So for this, go ahead and stick the wire down inside of the wing. Go ahead and do your best to kind of guide it so it goes towards the center of the wing. If it is done correctly. It should be able to fit in the wing real nice and tight and be pretty solid even without glue. All right, go ahead and remove your servo. In, in, your, in your quick kits and in the plans, we've got these little squares. What those are for, you go ahead and pop those guys out. Go ahead and pop out all six of those. What we're gonna do, is we're gonna take three of them and just simply glue them together. Just a little bit of glue, doesn't need to be a whole lot. You just glue them and press them. Let's go ahead and get the third on there. Now right, you've got a small, just a block of foam, three thick, three foam thicknesses thick. Go ahead and let that sit to the side and dry. In the meantime, let's get the other one glued up as well. Go ahead and take one of your brick or one of your blocks you just created. Just start kind of smashing down one of the ends. Not trying to really smash it down too far, just enough so you get that little bit of an angle. What we're gonna do with that is just take a little bit of hot glue on this surface right here. We're gonna take that and shove it through this little hole. All that's gonna do is create a little bit of a spacer to kind of support the servo in there. So if you have you know hard landing or if you have a bit of a crash, the servo's gonna stay in there real nice and tight. So let's go ahead and get a little bit of glue on that. And push that right down into the hole. When you're gluing that in, make sure the angle that you just put in there is facing towards the trailing edge of the wing. Go ahead and press that in there real tight until it's solid. All right, as soon as that's nice and solid, Let's go ahead and take that servo that we had earlier. Let's route those wires back through the wing like we had them before. Before we glue it in there, let's go ahead and take the sticker off the one side that we're going to be gluing down to the foam board. And also take either a sanding block or some sandpaper and just kind of rough it up to give the glue something to stick to. If you don't have any sandpaper with you or anything, go ahead and take your uh, X-Acto blade and just start scratching it up. It has the same effect. Just make sure you get it in there in all different directions. And make sure you have plenty of scratches in there. Give the glue plenty of plenty of grip. As soon as you got that in there, let's go and do one final quick test just to make sure everything's still fitting where it should. Now let's 
looks good. So let's go ahead and put some glue on there. Let's finish that off. Go ahead and put quite a bit of pressure in there. Try to make that servo pretty much flush with the bottom edge of the wing. Go ahead and let that sit in there until it's completely dry. All right, as soon as that glue is dry, I like to just go on the top and just kind of make one final pass of glue. And I'll take a scrap piece of foam board. Let's go ahead and just flatten that out. Kind of cover the servo in it and just make it one final resort to make sure that thing's in there nice and strong. As soon as this is dry, let's go ahead and repeat the same process just to the other side of the wing. Take your three pieces of foam that you glued together, smash down one side. Make sure it'll fit in there. If everything's looking good, go ahead and glue it in. And again, make sure that side that you squish down is towards the leading or the uh, trailing edge of the wing. Just gonna make sure it's gonna make it so it's nice and flat at the bottom of the wing. All right, and just like we did with the other servo, let's go ahead and grab the left-hand servo. Kind of do that same thing where I just add a little bit of pressure, kind of wobble it around just so we can get those lines in the foam where we can kind of get the arms in there. Also in the process, go ahead and hold that servo down and just see if you can mark roughly where the servo needs to go, where you can dig out some more foam to make sure it's going to fit for you. All right, let's go ahead and cut that out. All right, go ahead. Do a final test just to make sure it's going to fit in there. That's nice and tight. So let's go ahead and run the wire through it, just like we did on the other servo. Before I glue it in, let's again remove the sticker that's on the inside surface of the servo. Can use some sandpaper to scuff it up so we can give the glue something to grip to. All right, as soon as that's done, let's go ahead and put some glue on it. Let's get that in there. When you're pushing down the servo, make sure you support the bottom of the wing with your other hand. Uh, you just want to make sure you don't end up folding the wing at all, doing any damage that doesn't need to be done. All right, let's finish that off with the top layer of glue. And come back in with that scrap piece of foam board just to finish it off. Why don't you get those in there? Notice that I've got one pulled through already. Got to kind of go and look for the other servo wire. So when you find that, just pull it through. You should have the two, both the left and the right. You just want to kind of pull them out. Just make sure they're not going to fall back into the wing. Go ahead and put the canopy back on. At this point, let's go ahead and grab our control rods. You're going to have two shorts and two longs. For the aileron, you're only going to need the short ones. Let's go ahead and grab those and grab yourself a pair of pliers. What we're going to do at the very end of this, we're going to grip with a pair of pliers and we're going to do our best to make a small disease end. As 
And you got that little Z-bend in there. All right, if needed, go ahead and trim off the edge of this just so you don't have a ton of material there. Some is always good. While we're at it, go ahead and grab one of your 3D printed control horns. I'm just go ahead and stick that wire right through. All right, I should leave it this right here. Let's hurry and do a quick dry fit. You'll notice in your ailerons, you got that little slot that you had in there earlier. I'm just gonna slot that right in there. Should fit pretty nicely. And when that's sitting in there, the hole in the control horn should be lined up right about the top of the uh, right about the top of the hinge. So let's go ahead, put our fingers over these over the uh, gap between the aileron and the rest of the wing. And I'm just going to take my pair of side cutters, roughly get you know, a quarter inch more than you need, quarter to a half of an inch. We'll just cut that extra off. Make sure to hold both sides because they will go flying. All right. Double check that everything is good on that. That looks perfect. Let's go ahead and do that to the other side. Go ahead and do the same thing with this other side. Go ahead and plop that right in there. Make sure that's centered with the rest of the wing. Give it roughly an extra quarter of an inch. If it's a little more than that, it doesn't matter. Go ahead and just snip that off. Let's go ahead and discard the rest of the wire. Double check that the fit was good. We should be good to go. All right, to finish this off, we like to use linkage stoppers. It just makes it a little bit easier, a little bit quicker. Let's go ahead and pull off the nut on the bottom. We may have to bore out a slightly larger hole in our servo arm. Let's hurry and see. It's not quite going to fit in there. Let's go ahead and grab our razor blade and just widen that hole a little bit. All right, now we've bored out that hole a little bit. Let's go ahead and screw this little guy into the servo arm. And then to secure it on, we'll just use a small nut that comes with it. Just to tighten that down and make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Now what we're going to do is remove this control rod. Go ahead and put that right through this linkage stopper. And what we're going to do is before we put that back in that little bit of hole we got there, we're going to fill that with hot glue. Make sure that's in the linkage stopper. And finish that off just by holding it down, making sure to clamp some pressure on it so it doesn't come loose. We'll go ahead and repeat the same thing on the other side. All right, so just like the other servos, so just like I did before, I removed the sticker from one of the sides. In this case, since it's going to be sitting in the airplane like this, I just made, made sure to remove the back side. Let's hurry and sand down the edges just to make sure you get the glue nice area to grip onto. Do a quick test fit. There's two little slots, one on each side. And what that's going to do is it's going to accept this little lip right there. Get in there. Should push in pretty easily. As soon as you get in there, it just kind of rests right in there. So as long as everything's lining up right, let's go ahead and put a pretty decent amount of glue on that. Put on that surface, as well as this surface. And we can cover the little lip in there. Let's get that guy glued in. Go ahead and press up against that nice and firm. Make sure that's nice and solid before you release any pressure. Definitely don't want that coming off mid-flight. Right, we'll go ahead and repeat the, thing, the same thing on the other servo. Let's go ahead and make sure it's going to fit in there for us. Everything looks good, so let's go ahead and load it up with glue. Go ahead and press.
press that nice and secure. All right. So you grab, I'm going to grab the barbecue skewer. You'll see there's, there's these two little slots, one right here on this side and on the other edge, and be right in here. What we want to do is take that barbecue skewer and run it down through that slot. Just kind of open it up, make it so a wire can fit down there freely. And get in there nice and free. Just open that up nice and wide and do the same with the one on top. All right, once you got that taken care of, start off with the elevator. Go ahead and flip it, go ahead and flip the airplane over. All right, just like we did for the push rods on the ailerons, just go ahead and create a quick Z bend. If you have any extra material, go ahead and cut that off. I don't have any in this case, so I'm just gonna leave it there. Take your 3D printed control horn. Go ahead and feed it right on through. And what you're going to want to do is on the elevator, you got this little notch that comes out and it feeds through the fuselage or the empennage right back here. So feed the wire all the way through. And that should just go. We we'll want to do a quick test fit just to make sure that pops in there nice and tight. If everything looks good, we'll go ahead and pump that full of glue. And you'll install the control horn. Go ahead and hold that there for a while, make sure it sets up. And if you want, go ahead and add a little bit of extra glue just to the sides, make it a little bit stronger. All right, so just like we did with the ailerons, go ahead and take your control rods, cut them about a quarter inch longer than where the servo is at. Um, go ahead and feed it through your linkage stopper or use a Z-band if that's what you prefer to use. Go ahead and secure it down and that's done. All right. In the kit, if you got one of our quick kits, it came with a barbecue skewer. What that's used for is it makes for a really nice little tail skid so it makes it a lot more durable. So what we're going to do, we're just going to take it to this point down here where the hinge is and go out to the furthest bit on the end of the rudder. Go ahead and take your pair of side snips, pliers, whatever you have and just cut the end off. And all we're gonna do there, we're gonna put a bead of glue down the inside of this, and we're just gonna set down that barbecue skewer right inside. If there's any extra glue, go ahead and just take a scrap piece of foam board, and just wipe that out, because that's off. Go ahead and flip it over. And one thing that I highly recommend doing to strengthen all your control surfaces, all of your um, you know, rudder, elevator, all that. This also keeps the foam from delaminating. If you just take the end of the hot glue gun and slowly pump a little bit of glue just all the way down this, all the way across the rudder, you know, do that on all exposed surfaces, it'll make them last a lot longer, keep it from delaminating, and make it quite a bit stronger as well. So I'll go ahead and do that to all my control, all my uh, surfaces. All right, once you have all that done, last step, go ahead and grab your propeller. This one we're using a nine by 4.7 slow fly prop. I'm going to slide that on, slide that right onto the uh, prop adapter. Make sure there's no debris or anything on the end of your motor shaft. Slide that guy on. And I usually use a pair of pliers, but if you have you know, a small screwdriver or something you can use, if you have something small, just like a small wire you can use, go ahead and feed that down through this hole and slowly tighten it until it's nice and secure on the motor. You're ready to go. Well, there you have it, guys. This is the HRC7. And now you're ready to go out and fly. 
It's an amazing airframe. If you haven't had a chance to see it, we'll put some links in the description below where you can see our sneak peek video and our release video. A lot of people have put a lot of time and effort into this plane. We hope you enjoy it. Um, from Kylan, the designer, all the way down to our beta team, we really appreciate them. Um, they've been an amazing support to us. Um, they really put this uh, airframe through its paces and without them, we couldn't do what we do. On top of that, we thank you for your support. If you haven't already, head on over to thehangerrc.com. There's lots of great content there. Um, not only is there free plans, but you can also support us by purchasing one of our quick kits and it really speeds up the time. It really speeds up. <laughs> really speeds up the build process. There you go. Uh, it really speeds up the build process. Also, another way you can support us is liking us on social media. Head on over to Facebook, give us a like, follow us on Instagram. While you're on our Facebook page, you can join one of the best RC communities out there, the Squadron. We affectionately call our fans the Squadron. Without their support, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. So head on over there, join the squadron. There's lots of great content on the squadron group and um, show off your planes. Post a picture of your seven. Absolutely, we'd love to see, we'd love to see videos. We'd love to see photos from you guys. So don't forget to do that. Another way you can support us is subscribing to us on YouTube. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the, nope. Hit the, <laughs> nope. It's, uh, and press the it's bell 4, notification. It's 4.10 in the morning. By the way, this will be the outtakes. Yeah, it's. It's late. A little early. We're, we're doing this for you. We kind of started We're doing yesterday. this for you. Yeah. <laughs> this is what we do. For we're whatever a little reason. Bit. I don't know what we're doing this for, but all right. Don't forget to subscribe to us on, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. That's what we want you to do. That's what we're trying That's to go for. To we can't get it that low. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. That's what we want you to do. Press the bell notification if you want the latest updates, quick there, as possible. There you go. There we go. That's what you need to do. Okay. Hit that subscribe button. That really supports us. Hit that subscribe button. You hit the subscribe button, it supports us. <laughs> okay. All right, I think we're done. This is great. Okay, one last thing. Also, I want to send a, a special thanks out to Adrenaline RC. They're located in Northern Utah. They're Northern Utah's premier um, hobby shop. And they're the ones that have supported this. They're the ones that have made this episode possible. All our electronics were donated by them. We really appreciate them. Once again, Adrenaline RC, if you're in Northern Utah, head on over to the shop. Have a stop by. Stop by, you'll see Kyle in there and you'll see me there. I probably hang out there way too much, way more than I should. And, but it's a great shop, it really is. The, the uh, people there, they, they really know what they're talking about. They really understand, you know, the RC hobby from planes to cars to uh, model rocketry. Um, what do else? a little bit of everything. They do, they really do do a little bit of everything. And they're a great shop. If you're having trouble with your car, they have a knowledgeable staff that actually knows what they're doing and can take care of you. <laughs> They can take care of you, yes. And I can't take care of our own airplane. As I just knocked my seven <laughs> to oblivion. So make sure you head on over if you're in Northern Utah. If you're visiting, <laughs> stop, stop. This is, okay, we're done. I'm just gonna wrap it up. All right. <laughs> These are gonna be great outtakes. People are gonna love it. <laughs> Who would have known? I know, right? That 412 in the morning is a fantastic That's time so to film videos. To, to finish a video. <laughs> All right, and we're done. No. Are you sure about that? Yes. No. No. Mm -mm. We we really hope to see you on a flying field. Send in your pictures. Uh, seven. We're out of here. Bye. <laughs> um, well, Kylan, I think we said enough. Um, why don't we take these things out? Let's go fly. Sounds perfect. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs>